Hey guys, it's Chris from Enola Gay, and it's time for Vulcan Debrief Live. Welcome to the most interactive airsoft show on the interwebs. It's the Vulcan Debrief Airsoft Live Show. Each and every episode is sponsored by the fine folks at Enola Gay and Elite Force. Check out their product lines at enolagay.com and eliteforceairsoft.com. Also, don't forget to sign up for the largest growing airsoft community in the world, known as the Valken Alliance. We also offer alliance sponsorships for qualified airsoft teams. And the Valken Debrief also shares local and national airsoft events so you don't miss out what's going on in your region. We also give away sweet products from time to time, so the more you interact, the greater chances you win. And we work hard to bring you a new and exciting special guest during each episode. You can also find us at many airsoft events throughout the world. And if you miss any of our live casts, you can always catch the rewind on our YouTube channel or SoundCloud. So sit back and get ready for your Valken Debrief. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's another... <clears throat> what the heck was that? Throg. 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 Definitely a throg. <laughs> throg. What's it? A throg. throg. <laughs> it's another episode of the Valken Debrief throg. Airsoft live show episode number throg sounds like it's the name of like a bad guy 116 because he doesn't want to say the number anymore i didn't say that i, I you just did. i was finishing my thought like that was a <laughs> i had a whole thing going on there Jeez. oh my god you're all business lately you need to relax just no, it off. Shake, it off. shake it off you know <laughs> so thank you for joining us for another week man i can't believe we've gone 116 episodes 116 well you've gone 116 i've gone like 35 ish ish I think you're like 84 so I'm like in the 30s right now like yeah you, you can't sound like 84 there. I'm feeling good it's when we had that John McCaleb and that Cade Yates and uh, we had show. we had some audio oh, issues oh and Rich Gully are we frozen no we're not frozen just, are we just no we're, we're not just frozen. that unanimated right now okay so tag your friends get them in the show we're gonna have a fun conversation tonight we're actually running a contest this week if you tag your friends you can win one million exposure bucks <laughs> I was like, what is he about to say? I'll, I'll give away the house. I mean, like, you know, I'll, I'll go into Bob's office and grab a tchotchke or something and give that away. Who cares? No. <laughs> that's, that's sacred ground right there. I do it for you, the audience. I will run the gambit. All spy versus spy style. <laughs> that's what they probably think it's like here working at an airsoft company is that, like, we just sneak around shooting each other with airsoft guns all day. That's, that's yep. what goes on here. So tag your friends and share the show. Let's try to get up to 50 folks tonight. We're going to have a fun conversation. Steel Reapers in the house. Yeah. And uh, Tony Patton just joined us as we, well. We can't forget our tradition. What's, the first commenter in the chat receives the Overachiever of the Award. I think we need, to, we need to do this a different way from now on. From now on, if we don't announce it, it's Ethan. And if we do announce it, <laughs> someone beat Ethan. We can just assume it's Ethan from now on. Ethan did post first. He was. So, I mean, he's he's setting the gauntlet down. I mean, I, I don't Dude, know. Dude, with as many has. times he's got it, I mean, he's got a lot of exposure books. I don't know if he has, like, nothing else to do on a Thursday night. Like, you know. <laughs> but we appreciate you hanging out with us. Because <laughs> that's what we're doing. See, Chris Rainey from Cerberus, he agrees. Giving away kaiju stuff is definitely frowned upon. Frowned upon, not forbidden. Remember that. It's oh all about gosh. the wording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, what so, do we got next? We tonight's uh, going to be a fun show. We want to thank our sponsors. We got sponsors? We do. Got, are they good sponsors? <clears throat> we do. Generous sponsors? And they're spinning right here. Are they, they read right up a over, over, over here? Elite Force. Wait. And then there's an old gay. An old gay. Yeah, and the Valken Alliance. The Valken Alliance. And the Valken Alliance. Have we done the how to sign up for the Valken Alliance? Have no. How, how, let's do that real quick. Just real quick. Um, remember, multi-level marketing. So you set up two downstreams, they set up two downstreams, and before you know, you have a whole empire of people working in the airsoft world for you. I don't know what they're doing, but <laughs> they, they, that's how this works. It takes two minutes, guys. Just go in to the uh, ValkenAlliance.com. Did I get that right? Yep. ValkenAlliance.com. Autofill if you get your autofill. Otherwise, it's like four questions, just your address, name, you know, basic stuff, and then just 
we'll approve you and come yep. hang out in the groups. Yeah, and then go back to Facebook, look up Falcon Alliance, join your local if region. If you're a small promoter or you're like uh, got a small regional group, it's a great extra asset to post. Like if you're doing games or you're trying to do swap meets or any of that usual stuff, it's one more asset like for you to get your information. Indiana out there. Airsoft Community. It's like you want more people to come to Indiana events. Post in the Valk Alliance groups. Midwest Region Facebook group. That's a good and because there is people posting from multiple states, it's a good way to get your message to neighboring airsoft players. So, oh, and yeah. uh, we do have another sponsor tonight. Is it, oh, that's right. Our T-shirt sponsor, Fatco Customs, paid paid twice as much, double yeah. double the exposure, double the pleasure, double the fun. That's right. I'm gonna, actually double mint gum. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag Ryan. Do they still sell double mint gum? Yes. Yes, they do. They don't do the double mint commercials anymore with all the twins, though. That's uh, that's disappointing. <laughs> I'm going to tag Ruth as well. <laughs> Are you? So I I think Ryan's on the mend again, by the way. So I saw a, a hospital gown picture. I don't know if that was a memory or something, but if you're on surgery number nine thousand for this year, good luck, brother. Yep. So we also have a hotline for the show, which will be open in just a minute. But for those that are listening. Uh, area code eight five six nine seven five zero six. I want a new caller. Five zero. We kind of talk to the same people all the time. I want a new caller. Anybody can call in. Anybody. Request a topic. Request a guest. Request to talk about mm. their field or their store. Um, a shout out to yourself. You got a YouTube channel. You want to? You want to? You want to just give a shout out? I don't yeah, care. Exactly. We, we got time to fill. We're here for you guys. So <laughs> jot down that phone number. Area code eight five six. Nine seven oh, five we, we zero six both five of the zero. Dean's finally watching. They have both joined us. Oh yeah, Ryan Dean has that. announced. Look, we're we're all Fatco fans here, because you know if wait hold on <laughs> let me do the we'll do the full commercial. Once you go fat, you never go back. <laughs> I mean that kind of is a rhyme. It's it, it is. is a rhyme ish. It's I think a, it's I think it's a catchy slogan. I like it a lot. My wife thinks it's really funny. So um, and she doesn't really like <laughs> stuff. So that's that's kind of high praise for her. So, if you want to go back and if this is the first time you're watching or listening and you want to check out more episodes, head on over to our YouTube channel, Valken Video. I heard we might be getting our own or so that might be getting our own YouTube channel soon. So that from, the budget opened up a little bit. I heard some rumors, and we might be getting our own I know, YouTube channel. We, you know, if that happens, and what I mean, our not like debrief, but like. Valken airsoft, airsoft, Valken only. airsoft. So we don't we, have to mingle with those paintballers. Yes, yeah, so we can separate ourselves from all those icky paintball videos, and we don't have to get cross. If you get contaminated with paintball, do you have to like? Is there like a shot you get, or how do you deal with that? Only if it's oil based. Okay. Other if it's than... peg based, it just wipes right off. Okay. It's okay. So I don't have to worry if I like rub up against some obstacles that are got paintball on there. I won't, no. I if won't the, start if the paint is still colors. there, that's oil based. Okay. And it's there till the end of time. Okay. So. <laughs> So I should I should wash carefully whenever I go to man. We're already field. up to forty one. Yeah, I was about to mention that if people tag some more people, we could yeah. have something away. So you can also check us out on SoundCloud, the podcast audio version. Oh wait, you know what? I got to get Big G, the high five. Oh yeah, we got to get him in here, especially since he gave us the main you know main satellite. I know we right? have to we have to kiss the ring on that one because we are we're thankful for your support, Big G. Yes, we oh. are. So, um, we are going to open up the phone lines right after the commercial break, and tonight we're going to be talking about airsoft player types, and to get everybody warmed up, I'm going to publish a poll. And here's the best part. We actually did our homework this time. We have numbers. We always do homework. We have demographics. Wait, we, I'm the one that does homework and doesn't show. You just show up and look great. Wait, wait what's this I business? There's no <laughs> I in team, but there is a me. <laughs> so I thought, 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 thought this was a was a team game. Like you know, I'm doing other stuff. I'm out there scouting. I'm the man on the street. You are. I got my my ear to the the page. Oh, and if you're watching for the first time and you don't know, I'm the kaiju, the supreme commander of the Falcon Alliance, Peltas, Lord Fuzzy Face of the BB Shire. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Quick announcement. Um, it's Taco Tuesday next week, so head on down to your local representative of the BB Shire and get your issued tacos. We have both carnitas and and uh, adobada. And, you know, street taco size, you can have big yep. taco size, crunchy, soft. Now remember, it is all you can eat, but uh, only two per customer. you got to come back around. You can't stock up for, like, the week. That's how we keep you guys from taking advantage. So Taco <laughs> Tuesday, this guy's. Yes. So um, the poll is up. What type of airsoft player are you? So throughout oh, the chat, 
make your vote. Mrs. Kaiju just made a great point that uh, we didn't include the spectator as one of the type of airsofters. The the airsoft watchers. Is that a is that no? A because typically, the parents that drop off their kids don't stay and watch. They just diddy mow and. What about media do... people? Like they don't actually play. They take they watch through their camera. Does that count? They could be called spectators, kind of? No, because they're not actually paying attention to, uh, like, the game. Itself, and, they're not, like, keeping score. No, they're just, like, going from, like, action to action to action, but not really knowing okay. what's going on. I tried. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so dope. Is there a hangover <laughs> air softer? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's all of Overwatch. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, after we ta- have the our topic of discussion tonight, we are going to be sharing airsoft events. And there are a lot, a lot have we're popped not, up in March and April. We're not going to tell you how to how to get your name on the list anymore because there's too many events. We have too many to read. You have to we're make send it secret now. a Facebook event link I to we were making it a secret. the Valken Airsoft <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> Don't direct message us or my personal account or his personal account. Yes. Valken Airsoft Facebook May page. Account. Send your event there. Because if you send it to me, I'll give you a high five and a thumbs up, but it's not going to Everybody's saying Milson, 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 Milson. Whoa, this crowd. Hold on. We need to, you know, and actually that brings up a good point. I'd love, if there's some speed softers out there that want to educate this audience on maybe some why they're wrong, and maybe just tell us about something we may not know about, please let us know because we'd love to talk to you. Yep, yep. And have that argument. I mean, discussion, whatever we're calling it. Conversation. <laughs> Conversation is how, yep. see how much we can rile the chat up. I mean, what's worse for this chat? Speed soft or if we bring paintballers on? Which would be worse? I wonder. Ooh. Let us know. I, I'm not sure. And uh, Joe Mini just joined us. Speaking of Joe, uh, be sure to check out our friends of other Airsoft podcast shows, Gorilla Airsoft Radio. And, and, and Gorilla Airsoft. There's no other podcast. Just Gorilla <laughs> Airsoft. That's it. No. <laughs> and ASAP, ASAP podcast. And also our friends over... Chair Softer Show in the UK. Oh, that's right. We have mm-hmm. we are, we're starting a podcast network almost for Airsoft at this point. We are a network of Airsofter <laughs> talkers, that not players. <laughs> All right, we're gonna cut to a quick commercial. Don't go anywhere. Tag your friends. Get them in here. We're gonna have a fun show with a hotline open. Don't go anywhere. Please right after tell this, us we are wrong. Call us and tell us why. Commercial break. All right. Come on, come on. I got it. I got come it. On, plenty of time. Ready? Check out Airs. Soft Revolution 15. <laughs> we just were on everything. Hey guys, this is Psycho with Airsoft Revolution 15, and you need to watch the Valken debrief on Thursdays. And while you're at it, might as well go ahead and check out Airsoft Revolution 15 on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and at airsoftrevolution15.com. This is the Valken Stock Dock Charging Kit. The Stock Dock Charging Kit comes with a docking station charger rechargeable buttstock, and compatible buffer tube. The docking station charges batteries directly inside the buttstock, so you don't have to remove the battery from the buttstock. They come with Delta Peak detection, which automatically stops charging at a full charge, and also includes short circuit and reverse polarity protection. The stock dock kit is only compatible with NIM batteries using a mini Tamiya connector, and a NIM battery is not included. Thank you for watching, and please leave a review to tell us what you think. Welcome back. Did you see a hand model in that stock stock dock commercial? I know. Did you see those hands? Those were were sexy. You can can get a new job. I know. Moonlighting is a hand model. I know. Ooh, look at these. So if you guys need a hand model, please let me know. (laughs) Peltast underscore airsoft on Instagram. Just hit me up. William (laughs) Soto from Overwatch Tactics says, OMG, psycho, have my babies. I know. Isn't that... (laughs) You know, we we weren't actually going to run that bumper, but we saw you were in the chat, and we, yeah. we, we couldn't help it. We saw, oh, Psycho's in the chat. Let's run that we had, we had to embarrass you. We had to. Or maybe you're not embarrassed by it. I wouldn't be. That's a, that's a good bumper. <laughs> so I know Shelly's always self-conscious about that Who else has joined us? Uh, oh, um, Jamal Johnson, Jared Abernathy. Ooh, the Rich. famous Woodcock has joined us yeah. as well. Cerberus Airsoft is in the house with Rich Chris Rainey. Rich from Airsoft C3, Lucas Love. Lucky Branch, who rolls with the Airsoft for Vets crew. How's it going, buddy? Rick Gant, Mark Rich, man, what else did I miss? Felix Roa Hernandez. There's some na- there's some new names I don't even know here. Welcome if you're a new watcher of the I show. Know. Thank you so much. Ooh. <laughs> so, 
the topic segment. I have segment. small, girly-like hands. Yes, that's why I get all the hand modeling jobs. Duh. <laughs> why didn't, come on. It's not a disadvantage. Our topic segment tonight is brought to you by Enola Gay Smoke Grenades and Lifestyle Gear. Lifestyle Gear? Like, what kind of gear? Like, like hoodies? Yep. Like, uh, do they have their own, like, official Speedsoft, like, shorts now? Because that'd be cool. That'd be a cool thing. To I don't know if they do. Chris, if you're listening at Enola Gay, Speedsoft shorts. No, he's out of town. Is he we'll tag Darren. Tag Darren. Well, speed soft doing. shorts. That's what's missing from your lineup because you guys have all the stuff for speed softers that you know aren't actually gear. So you could be the final look. That's Just right. Saying, you exactly. Know? And they get lots of pictures taken of them, so it's a good marketing opportunity. Be <laughs> okay on shorts. You know. <laughs> well, people are voting. Are they already? Yep, they're voting. Keep I'm glad voting. to see that. I like I Don't like audience vote. participation. Yep. And this is great. If you're wondering how to vote, look down there by the chat. Daniel Tate, Box. what's up? Cole Thornton finally joined us, and now we actually see. Now I'll plug ASAP. Now that Cole joined us, I'll plug. Oh, ASAP that's how that for us. Yeah, you see. Okay. Like I guilt trip him into showing up, and then I tag him, and then Cole can't help himself because he, he he's he's drawn to clout like a clout <laughs> magnet. That's true. <laughs> How's um, it going, buddy? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope your things going good. So to kind of give you an idea, um, we're gonna open up a topic or a talking point, and then. After we uh, say some words about it, then uh, you'll see the phone number flash up on the screen. Tell us why we're wrong. Or tell us why we did not completely cover the topic. Oh, yeah. Or just tell us why, what you had for lunch. I don't care. So the first type of player that I think everyone knows this term is... Do you get that cool little graphic that you showed me earlier? Is that coming up? Oh yeah, Highwez. If if you don't know Highwez, H I W E Z, he makes great caricatures, and this one is awesome. This one's a caricature. Looks pretty one to one to me. I know, oh, right? right. <laughs> like, like I played with that guy before. I know. <laughs> so, um, so Speedsoft uh, looks like a paintball player. I yep. mean, I see I see that right there. Looks like a paintball pa- player. Um, what about their gear? It's minimalistic. I mean, they don't really have gear. They'll normally have like a little purse backpack or something for their tank. That's about it. Yeah, they got maybe, maybe a belt. Yeah, they usually run the Speed QB belt with just magazine pouches on them. But really, um, I don't know why they run mag pouches because most of them have like shout out to tap. Like most of them have like drum tap, mags, like I tap know. drum mags on their pistols, or they have like three hundred rounders. And when you're what's if there's a speed softer in the audience, please let us know what's an average length of a speed soft match. Like what, like a minute, thirty yeah. seconds, something like that. So if you burn, through well, no, a it's high five cap, minutes is the max is time. Yeah. So if you burn Go through around. a high cap in that, like that's yeah. you know you maybe need a high cap in your gun and one like in your cargo pocket or something. I don't know. You know, typically their guns are, are HPA. Um, they're just seeking out fast pace, competitive player elimination. Yep. games just straight up and they're the guys that slide into you from like three feet away they do they, bunker yeah, slides they do all that stuff like they, they 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 don't call mercy hits they just you know give you the nice little love handle tap which is always cool. well and, that, and that's the, that's the indoor i mean there yeah. there are uh speed softers uh, oh and they wear beanies yeah what's up with that it could, it could be 100 degrees outside and they wear beanies i can't i mean i tried to be a little speed softer when we were down at high ground and wear like a sweatshirt and that lasted like what Halfway through the first game before I stripped yeah. that off. I mean, I couldn't I mean, do it, man. Call in 856-975-0650. Um, share your experience in Speedsoft. Maybe you have a positive experience. Maybe you have a negative experience. Well, I think we were just joined by Top. Did he? I, I saw oh, yeah, reference. Alex Radke. Yeah, Top finally joined us. Wow. I'm, yep. Ooh, I haven't seen him in a, a hot minute. Oh, Are we getting we got a, a call? Caller? I don't get a call. Got to put my headphones on. Hey, thanks for calling the Vulcan Debrief. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Ethan. Pelt oh, up. what's up, chicken Ethan? for lunch. Oh, there you go. See? <laughs> Ethan, just call in and tell us whatever you want. Hey, we just <laughs> had chicken. We did have chicken. Yep. I had one of those tasty grilled uh, grilled chicken clubs from, um, what's it? Oh, yeah, Chick-fil-A. 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 I had to look at my cup. <laughs> so, Ethan. That's what I'm eating right now. Th- see? Chick-fil-A. Great minds think alike. Oh, exactly. See? What's going on, man? What do you have to say about Speedsoft? Um, oh, I think Speedsoft is cool. I'm just too fat to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I well, could not run around, even for that five minutes. <laughs> I, I think you're thinking about this the wrong way. It's Those guys didn't start off skinny when they started playing speed soft. They, started, <laughs> they, 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 they just got faster as they went. And I think being shot is a pretty good motivator to run faster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I concur. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's right. So do you, how do you guys have, uh, so I'm guessing you're normally more of like a Milsim type guy, right? Yeah, since um, the indoor field got closed down, everything's outdoor. So yeah. how do you have the interaction at your local field between like the speed softers and like the outdoor guys? Do you guys have the speed softers that have been forced outdoors we now? We have a couple of them. We have some of the guys that they don't always have the HPI pistols, but they come out with really good long guns and your basic uh, speed softer kit, and they come out there, and we've got a bunch of buildings, and it's really crowded in the high concentration areas, and they can go around and just wreck everybody in those small areas. So it's really fun when you get to see those guys everybody's back there with their rifles that are shooting so and they're the far only ones actually like so running into everything i mean what why do you yep. think why do you think they they have a um a paradigm that they're, they're like a wrecking crew like they just wreck people why do you think that? they don't care for their safety and nobody expects them to be on an outdoor field that's true mm-hmm. and they actually run they don't mm-hmm. sit behind a bunker and, <laughs> yeah. and take cover for half an hour no exactly. they, 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 they play real hard for about about three minutes, and then they uh, they go to their cars and don't talk to anybody. <laughs> now, would, would is is Speedsoft synonymous with like specific types of gear or guns? In your opinion? Oh, you know what? I, we forgot about that. No optics. They never have any optics on their guns. Not even iron sights. They have lasers and lights. They have lasers and lights. Yeah, yeah. but no actual sighting equipment. No. Nope. No. Nope. Well, because yeah, they're sh- shooting forty rounds per second, so they just see the. String of <laughs> that, that sound. I hate that yeah. sound because I know I'm about to be in a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> they got the full on freedom, kind yeah. of freedom going. Gotcha. Well, thanks awesome, for calling, man. and uh, Ethan, and congratulations yep. on being our overachiever of the night and every night. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and your question earlier. Yeah. No, I have no life. But <laughs> night. It's okay. We're here too. <laughs> thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Yeah, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, boys and girls, Rich Gully reminded me that there is a push to bring back ESR-19. So, I don't know what there that's is. all about. Uh, McCaleb I, started that. I've heard some heard some chatter. Yep. So, you know, and it's always good for at least pictures, because it's always muddy. and. Jamal Johnson trucks. says, make your ADS faster. What is... Aim down the sights. Oh. You know, when you uh, you hit left trigger in uh, first-person shooters. Gotcha. Does it work like that in real life, dude? <laughs> Lucky Brain says, I don't know how to run. I forgot the controls for it. Is it LB2? <laughs> left bumper 2? <two? laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I, I've always said I wish I could run like that dude in Call of Duty. Like, I don't know how he runs with all that gear on for, like, three hours straight, but uh, I, I want to be in that shape one day. You know, I, you know, Psycho's in here, and he actually looks... Like a speed softer, and he's not commenting. What well, is up because with that? he's not a speed softer. Like you're, you're mischaracterizing him. I don't know. Like you're assuming, but he his, looks like one. You're assuming his genre. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad. That's gonna be the new one. I don't assume my genre. Just because, just because I dress like this doesn't mean I am this. <laughs> <laughs> so um, next category. Oh, sorry. We got we got a second ASAP ASAPer in the house. So now I got to give a second plug to ASAP because we have two of them. Who's That's the how it works. Corey just joined us. Oh, did he? Yeah, which is sad because he missed the whole mortar discussion last week. Oh, he did. And he's our resident mortar guy. Oh, Cookie. Cook, no, not Cookie. Lone Wolf from mm. Overwatch. Is oh, and Hawk finally joined us. How's it going, Hawk? So, Doing Hawk things. Mr. Dalton Hawk. Let us know where you're going to be this summer because I want to say hi to oh, you. Oh, Jonathan Rudolph. We did not forget you. We see you there. Mm-hmm. We, we see do. you. <laughs> Welcome. You only had to say it three times. That's how important you are to us. <laughs> I mean, no. Uh. <laughs> oh, da- Darren! Darren is in the house now. So, um, Darren, uh, are there going to be speed soft shorts? For I think he answered here? that earlier and Did said he? like, "Hell no!" Like that's like really? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think he's missing an opportunity. I think we'll, we'll just steal that one right there and, <laughs> and go with it. Peltas branded speed soft shorts. Yeah, that's now, really my thing. Next uh, category coming up: another wonderful high whiz, high whiz caricature I don't know should we say what category it is or do you think people will figure it out I think that's Robo (laughs) no it kind of looks like Jonathan Canadian or actually Jonathan Higgs almost the beard is more Jonathan Higgs I think and then no because Jonathan doesn't have a mustache like that Jonathan's very uh, very light uh, light haired no light haired that but looks, yeah, if, if you know if you're a friend with a beard who plays Milsim, just feel free to accuse them of being this character. You said Milsim. They were supposed to guess. Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, did I give it away? <laughs> I think Nuno, it says Milsim on top of the card. Oh, Nuno Troca from 
Spain and Portugal is watching. Spain? Yeah, Spain. Spanish. Spain and Portugal? Or? Yeah. So we have a, a Spanish viewer. Espanol. Oh, Zeb Zengel. What's and up? I'll, and I'll say it more properly. Barcelona. <laughs> so, right. um, and this is, we're going to say not Milsim player. We're going to say Milsim event. Uh, because... Well, you do have your dress-up guys at your local field. Like, there's some no, people no, no, who no, dress no. up a little too what, much. Okay, so when I say Milsim event, we're talking about weekend long scenario. Oh, this is the guy who wants to go, you know, be full weekend warrior. Yeah, full right weekend now. warrior. Okay. Okay. Because um, one day is a part-time weekend warrior. Okay. So Milsim event attracts the full weekend warrior. They have warrior. to drive at least 12 hours, too. That's probably important. I would say eight, eight, they have eight, to at least drive eight hours. Six to eight hours has to be driven for every event. Right. Unless you live in SoCal and then you can just but, drive but, down the block. But seriously, they, they have a lot of expensive gear. And here, here's, in my opinion, they have 80% tactical, real tactical industry gear and only 20% airsoft gear. And I don't mean ratio of what they're holding. I'm talking about... The amount of money they spend. Because you get your mill simmers are going to spend a lot of time in surplus stores, or they're going to be on your um, your cry precision pages. Did I get that right? Did <laughs> I say that right, everybody? But, and you know, and honestly, like I mean, it's cool that they're spending money there, but that's not actually in the airsoft industry. That's real steel. Quote they're actually, yeah, they're actually spending money outside uh, of our hobby. And even when you look at their accessories, they're using real optics. They're using a lot of times real helmets. Like bump helmets are, you know, starting to go Some away. Some of them even wearing plate, real plates. Yeah, real plates. Um, <laughs> you know, and that I mean, it's that stuff's great, and it's great to support whatever you support. But people kind of, you know, think that you got five thousand bucks worth of gear on some of these guys, and that's five thousand bucks that's going into the industry. But that's not really a math problem you can do because. Yeah. Only a certain, you know, basically it's their gun and maybe the internals are pretty much all the airsoft stuff they're rocking. Daniel Tate says, I just want gear that lasts. So I guess, yes. Daniel, are you saying that airsoft gear doesn't last? I mean, I haven't run into any airsoft. Like the only stuff that really doesn't last that I've run into is the stuff that like turns p- purple on the third time in the sun. Oh, yeah. But as long as you stay above like the $20 range. <laughs> You're not going to put that much abuse to destroy anything. And you know? KD Yates has a good point. Most of the pants made for airsoft are not made for taller people. Oh, oh who's calling? Thanks for calling the Falcon Debrief. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Felix Hernandez. Oh. Mr. Arizona. What's Whoa, up? You're going to have to speak up there, little brother. How's it going? Going pretty good, bro. What's going on? Well, it sounds like you're having a party in the background. Would you mind turning that TV down just to scotch so we can actually hear you? Yeah, I'm moving away from the TV. <laughs> oh, you rock, man. Thank you. How's it going, brother? Going pretty good. How you guys doing? Good, good, good. Oh, uh, you know, just enjoying snowy Colorado. <laughs> so what, what kind of <laughs> comments do you have for a Milsim event player? Uh, I mean, I'm one of them. <laughs> by the low. I'm, I'm attracted by the three-day events. You know. Did so, you did you vote in the poll? Ah uh, yes, Milsim all the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here's a question for you. What's your number one Milsim stereotype that you run into? <clears throat> wow. Three day event. Um I have to say the the screaming operator. The screaming <laughs> operator? Ooh, Ooh define that one. Yeah. Uh, it's the one guy that's always screaming when they're coming into a door or when they come to contact, they contact front. You know, they're always giving away their position when you're trying to do a little stealth, you know, move and stuff. You so know. you're talking about like that guy that's uh, always screaming, get some when kicking doors for unnecessary he, He's reasons. the one that's always giving away your position. He's yeah. either white lighting you in the face. And he's a friendly at night, or he's just yelling and then he gets, for no reason. And then he gets really butthurt when you ask him to turn his white light off, like like you're really <laughs> offending him. <laughs> yep, I like that. L- one. Lucky Branch says the holier than than thou gear guy. The, ooh, <laughs> all right. So what? I, I'll t- I'll have a Milsim stereotype here. The guy who comes to the local skirmish day, and it seems like it's mostly Milsim guys, and they play. They spend like the first hour they're there getting all their gear together. Slowly getting dressed, buckling things, snapping things, loading things, wiping things down. Like, it's a bad movie. You know what I mean? And then they go play two games. 
and then they walk around and talk about their play carrier for the next three hours. <laughs> you know, like that guy? Is that, that what we're talking the about? The gear talkers. Yeah. yeah, the gear talkers. So, like, how would you, uh, Felix, how would you classify uh, their guns that they use? Because we're not going to we're not going to talk about like all the real industry stuff they purchase. I think we all know like nods and cry and all this other stuff. But what kind of airsoft guns are people buying to go to Milsim events? <clears throat> well, it's coming down to mostly uh, custom builds nowadays. You know, uh, I see a lot of HPA builds, mainly focus around the you know CO two cartridges. Um, well, and heaven forbid anybody has anything but an M four, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, me personally, I'm an M4 platform guy. Actually, I, I, anything US based, NATO based. I've never played with an AK or anything. Uh, Take that, uh, AK guys. W- would you say that a Milsim event player will play with their gun after they buy it, or before they take it out for the first time, they will completely gut the internals and throw in these upgrade builds even before they play with it once? Um. It depends. Me personally, I, I actually like to break them in. I broke all my AGs in. My gas blowback was broken in before I even did any upgrades on it. So it all depends on the player, you know, whether, you know, you buy high-end AG or high-end airsoft gun. That's already, you know, 100% good to go. Or you want to, you know, build up on whatever the company has manufacturing what do you what do you think uh is the average cost a milsim event player puts into their gun oh Whew. that all depends on the build again man you know if you're just building an ag and you're just doing inner barrel swapping you know 11.1 lipo i mean with the price of the gun you're probably spending you know four five hundred bucks you're going oh, I, I, I think you're lowballing it a lot. Well, I, I think you guys are missing the one expense that no one's mentioned, which is the first time you upgrade your gun and you either send it to like a sketchy place or you try and do it yourself, and then everything costs ten times more because you eat like three sets of internals trying to put it together yourself because you don't know what you're doing and refuse to ask for help. Oh so that's always a step in the Milsim upgrade yeah, process. I, yeah, that is, that is true. But, like... Like any person who has dealt with, you know, anything manufactured by somebody else and you're upgraded, you should always buy spare parts, you know? Ooh. So, yeah. Just like when you're working on your spare, car. Well, you, spare parts that you can easily replace yourself in the field. Because if it's, if it's a major malfunction, it's like, you don't want to go mess with that. Unless you're like, Fat Co <laughs> Customs. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, Michael Bright just brought up a good point that he's running a stock Alloy Mark II from Balkan. And he does not feel outgunned at major events. So I think like more... The Wait, do we know anybody else that has a Vulcan Alloy Mark II? There's a bunch of people. I do. Like all kinds oh, of Felix people. does. Does he have one? He I does have one. one. He doesn't like it though, does he? He, he, he wanted an Irene. <gasps> oh, that's right. Year. He uh, Have you broken that in yet? Gotten to, gotten to fondle it a little bit yet? Or have you, has it not made it out to the field? He, he doesn't like m rail. He wants to put a quad rail. He's high like five. You. High He's five. Like you. Forget skate, space guns. Space guns should die forever. And skeleton and skeletonized guns. That's for you, Jay. Oh, um, <laughs> Michael Miller says Franken guns. Right. Twig Humphrey says eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred bucks. Says, that doesn't even seem that ridiculous. Eight hundred bucks. Kd eight says six hundred plus. Yep, that's about it. So, well, if I if I tell you how much I invested in my first airsoft gun, which happens to be a KWA SR five. You're not gonna believe it. I paid three hundred for it, and I must have put another three hundred into it. Oh no! I mean months. that's. I mean honestly, that's like, in that six hundred range. That's not that. That's not that ridiculous. I mean, like when you actually we're do the math. About, we're, we're well, I mean, about, well, that is a lot because normally the average cost to replace an entire gearbox with upgraded parts is about a, is about a buck fifty. Yeah, but what's the first step everybody should do when they're doing upgrades for, especially for Milson? Hop and barrel. Well, I was going to say even before that, um, the, like the most important thing for Milsim games is going to be single uh, shot performance. And what's going to give you that best single shot performance is a Titan, a, a Titan or a battery that does precon. Yeah. And so we, yep. the Titan's eighty bucks by itself. So you know, getting to another three hundred dollars in parts when you just had hit eighty bucks already, because any upgrade build like that's the first like major step. I mean, barrel and. You know, um, hop up units. That's that's two pins and a drop in. But 
I'm talking like once you actually crack the gearbox, MOSFET's going to give you the most bang for your buck because it's just going to make everything work better. So and there, are, well, know. there are plug and play MOSFETs like the Gate Murph. Yeah, it there just you go. goes ding to ding. And that's going to give yeah. you that single shot goodness that everybody's going to actually want on the Milsim field. You know. So but here's, the, here's the biggest mistake that I see some players making, and it's spending money to upgrade a brand new gun right yep. out of the box. Go break you it know. first. Why do you Why do you say that's a mistake? Because, and again, I'm going to talk about that KWA again. That KWA is still running original factory internals, and it's about 10 years old. Why, why don't you think people sell, nobody's, nobody really does this yet. Um, so Ryan from Fatco, I'm giving you, we're giving you an idea here. Sell a completely upgraded gearbox. That you can just drop in yourself? Yeah, that you can just drop in yourself, and then Ooh. you can just put, you just go out and buy whatever, for, instead of going the other direction, Buying a gun and gutting it? No, you yeah. buy a gearbox and then go out and just buy all the well, stuff to you know go what around. Would be a great it. service is that if you just pulled your gearbox, mailed it in, you got a replacement gearbox, and then they rebuilt that for the next customer. <clears throat> then you could just well, keep it going. You know well, what I mean? but there, there is, there is nozzle alignment and stuff like that. Okay. But for the most part, for the most part. Well, I mean. Yeah, I mean it's doable. I've, yeah, I, he's, he posted like uh, like last month that he had a stack of done gearboxes. So yeah. that dude can make gearboxes. Hey, Eric E House House Connect oh. is watching. Be sure to check out. Ryan Ryan says he's already doing that. Oh, he's, he's already, already doing that gearbox from. Okay, so if you need a full gearbox, Ryan, hook you up. <laughs> Sorry. Be sure to check out E House and his channel, Gun Gamers, oh. on YouTube. And Eric, praise Judy. That's all I, I got to say. I don't know what that's about, but I just like to say, <laughs> Gun Gamers, high five for your channel. You guys have done some really kick ass, I guess, Airsoft Skyance, we're calling it. Actual oh, yeah. like videos where they sit down and mark off ranges and then change groupings oh, yeah. and different they actually, FPSs. E House and his crew, they actually your, do some pretty cool reviews. Your guys' um, flat hop comparison video that they used a Crytek SBR and swapped yep. out, that is one of the best pieces of Airsoft content I've seen ever, period. Heck yeah. High five, guys. So, um, one last question for you, Felix, before we let you go. Um, what do you think Milsim event players focus on the most? What are, they, what are they wanting to get out of a Milsim event? Objective, uh, uh, mission completion. <laughs> Different from Speed Softer, which you still get Speed Softer mixed in the mix when you're in a, a Milsim event. I've seen them, you know and actual Milsim gear, but they have the speed self attitude. They want to move quick. They, they, they disregard that they're within, within the squad, you know? Um, but basically Milsim players want to play the objective. They want to play the mission. At least me and my team, that's what we go, we look for in a Milsim event. I want a, an entire day of missions, fraggles, you know, pull the squad out, send them on a direct action mission, things like that. So, you, so you like you like realism, you like uniformity, you like structure. Yeah. Yes. It's a big, yes. I, get, I think the difference would be between Milsim and Speedsoft is Speedsoft is a small team game and Milsim is yeah. a big team game. You know, you like know, the, the teams are just bigger. Tactical versus not, strategic? There you go. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Tactical versus strategic. I, I'll take that one. I'm gonna catch fire for this, but I compare speed soft to pain bowlers. No, there's it's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's it's just quick games, you know, 10, 15 minute games, you know, next thing, next team's over, you know. Um, on Milsim, you know, you get a whole breakdown of what your objective's going to be, you know, the realism of, you know, um, go out there in a mission, go on a patrol, find a squad, get into a firefight. You know, it's not always the okay. We're here, whistle blows, and we're on a firefight right away. You know, I like to walk and get, you know, into the firefight. The, the camaraderie that you have with your squad mates, you know, Plus uh, running into a different squad, you know, uh, and, and conversating before you even get to do the mission, you know, things Plus, like that. Yeah. Plus, speed softers don't get the joy of having that one guy in your on your team that falls in the mud like two minutes into the day and then has to walk around with the coating no, of mud no, no, for the rest no, of the day. Okay. <laughs> you know? Anyway, Felix, thanks for your comments. Thanks for calling in, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. Be good, man. Good talking to you. All right. Cool. So, okay, no, just to go back to speed soft, okay. Everybody falls in the mud. Yes. Even speed softers playing outdoors with cleats on. But you have fallen in the mud. But normally they play on concrete. That's what I they was saying. They still play in, in hordes, in little in groups, 
you know, they may not, they're probably, they're probably not as or an organized team like a Milsom event player, but they are a little ball of chaos just zooming through the field. No, I, 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 I love playing with them outdoor. The only thing I think is funny is that when you get the new speed soft player outdoor for the first time and they're like, I keep, every time I, you know, get in cover, I get shot. Like, what's going on? They can't figure it out. And then you like, hey, dude, you know, you got bright green 550 cord on your gun and a bright red mask. You kind of stand out out here. Sure. <laughs> and they don't always get that because they're still in their indoor stuff. So it's a little on the bright side. It makes me laugh every time. You know, it, it would be cool if we could get, um, like, a field owner or an event uh Mm. Um, hosts to to call in and give their opinion. You know, has anybody thought about doing like a big speed soft game, like a two hundred person at one time speed softer game? Like that'd be insane. Like Milsim, but just a giant speed soft game. The the only time you get that many speed softers together is at like Tax City when they do their speed QB indoor. Tournament. How do you attract speed softers? Is there like a like a tra- like a bait you leave out or something oh to get gosh. them to, to come play? Like, uh, do you offer them free hoodies or something like that, or do you leave a pile of beanies in the middle of the field and they all show up? How does that work? For all the newcomers, uh, don't forget to vote. Uh, the poll is up. Uh, what type of airsoft player are you, or would you like to be? What kind of airsoft player would you like to be? No, what? It's R. It's present tense. Okay, so this is not like an aspirational thing. No. Okay. <laughs> it's very worded, very specifically. Also, want to say thanks once again to our middle of the show sponsor, Enola Gay. Smoke, Pyro, air, uh, Lifestyle Apparel. Yep. Did I get all that right? Yeah, you did. And maybe coming soon, shorts. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Let us know, Darren. So, our next group uh, <laughs> that we're going to be talking about is Indoor CQ. B. This is a toughie. Why do you think it's a toughie? Well, because you got a little bit of everything. Like, because you have the, you have your dress up guys, you have your um, what you'd call milsim guys, but are just more dress up guys because they don't actually do the milsim thing. Yeah. You got your speed softers. You got Uh-oh. your hoodie kids. Ooh, we got a call. Who's calling? Thanks for calling the Vulcan debrief. What is your name? Where are you calling from? This is Dalton Hawk Gillum, and I'm calling from Kansas. What's up, hey, Hawk? How you doing, buddy? How's that beautiful wife of yours doing as well? She is doing fantastic. That's good to hear. You guys are one of my favorite husband and wife teams in Airsoft. I just have to say high five Aww. for that. Thank you, pal, Dad. You're welcome. Always kind words for you, brother. Well, so. hey, I, uh, I called in. I wanted to uh, fix something from a couple Falcon debriefs ago. Oh, did I tell the story of your proposal wrong? You almost did. Okay. <laughs> almost. <laughs> you, it was at the right place, wrong event. Oh, okay. I knew it was at a school, and I knew it was snowy, because I remember you showing yeah. me the pictures. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was Operation Red Rising from Battleborn, and okay. at the school in Iowa. Oh, gotcha. okay. So, I'm sorry I got that wrong. But <laughs> yeah. there was a proposal at Manhole, that event so. place... Not, I just did the wrong promoter. I'm sorry. My bad. You guys know I screwed this up. No, no, you're fine. I did get called an a-hole for uh, proposing to her on a roof because she has asthma and had to walk up like six, seven flights of stairs. Well, you should have carried her. Like you should have just, you could have carried her through the threshold and then the next threshold and the one after that. (laughs) Right, right. On the way back down. So, so, so Dalton, I'm not going to let you go that easily. So we were talking about uh, the speed soft group before, Milsim event group before. Now we're on to indoor CQB group. What do you think um, makes up the characteristics of an indoor CQB group that already isn't speed soft and already is not Milsim? Okay. I think I have a pretty good insight on this because I actually ran with a team that was sponsored by an indoor arena, and we actually ran indoor for the longest time. Ooh, fill us in. Um, And that's in being Milsim guys that went indoor, uh, it was kind of, it wasn't speed soft, um, but yet it again wasn't Milsim because we had to use specific tactics from Milsim and then other things didn't translate over as well because of the very tight corners and things like that, but still the uh, non-vocal hand communication came into play a yeah. lot more. How, how, is, how is the gear different from our two previous groups? Oh my gosh, uh, the gear difference between the two of them, like Milsim, you're totally decked out, like head to toe, you know, you're carrying everything that you can and you have, you know, a Mohawk helmet camera, a GoPro, <laughs> you know, a, a three, GoPro three gun cams. 
<laughs> yeah, three gun cams, a camera filming over your shoulder. Um, There's just the foot cam off. if you need those that B roll as well, the one that points straight. Right. So, so, so we, we've got our Milsim and Speedsoft stereotypes. So, what yeah. would you wear as an indoor CQB player normally? Um, as an indoor CQB player, uh, one knee pad. Yep. Okay. Definitely one knee pad. Um, a, uh, I would either wear like the Spiritus rig, like you know something small, or um, the, a minimalist rig with yeah, with no cummerbund. Right. Okay. Right. That if they wear anything. Bun, that way you can lean over and get down. Or um, for the longest time, I wore a tack belt. And okay. like the other thing, I know this is going to sound really dumb, but I actually wore my uh, old paintball gloves that had the underneath side of my hand padded because of how many times I would run into walls and stop myself to lean yep. around the corner hey, no, and just I mean, tear my hands up. You know, that makes sense. the glove, the, the glove uh, comment brings up a very good point for indoor CQB, which is I always get shot in my knuckles. Like, I ha- I, like whenever I get done with, like, a day of the indoor field, my knuckles look like I have some you kind of skin disease. You need a pair of Falcon Kilo belts. I do, but, like, that's mostly because, you know, when you're playing indoor, that's the first thing that gets shot Have you seen that body. review where... A uh, gentleman put it on and he just starts punching a metal wall and his hand yeah. is not hurt. And yeah, I had to pound away. the metal wall back the other way. Oh, did you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I did clean up from that. <laughs> so, uh, do they wear a paintball mask or goggles with mesh mask? Uh, I was always goggles, mesh mask, and a helmet. Yeah, yeah, because you could you could bang your head around real easy. Also, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that was. That was a big thing. Was uh, we when we played? It was actually called uh, the Black Market, and it was in the basement of an old foundry. Ooh, that sounds um, cool. So and yeah, dangerous. it was super cool. We actually yeah, we got to uh, to start games out and stuff like that. The two teams would ride down in a freight elevator, one on either side of the facility. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's really neat. What um, game modes? What kind? Ca- no, did I skip ahead? No, no, no. Well, we'll go to game modes. What kind of game modes uh, do in- indoor CQB players like to play? Uh, a lot of them, uh, being there at Black Market, they had their own kind of set up specific ones. Well, less um, And it was kind of, it was kind of the, more so like paintball, you know, the flag that's in the middle. Mm-hmm. You had to run up and reach, you know, and pull it back to your own place or go to the other end. Uh, there was one that they considered, they called it uh, uh, heist. And one team was defending a big giant duffel bag full of money, and the other team had to either be stealthy and get it and get the heck out, or eliminate everybody, grab the bag, and get back. Could to the you freight dump the bag and like hand out the money to everybody to like go separate ways back to the spawn, or did you have to use the bag? <laughs> you bringing that up? <laughs> was was that a point of contention at your old field? Am, am I, am I yeah, guessing? <laughs> it it was because we did it. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm uh, glad I'm not the only one who thinks that way. <laughs> right, no, we had one guy, uh, it was one of our snipers, that he, well, he's the, our Milton sniper. Uh, and see, this is the other thing, too. We had a guy, like, there was a crow's nest on either side, and we had a guy build a sniper rifle for indoor use that was field legal there. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so, so speaking of, of field legal, typically what type of uh, airsoft pew-pews are brought in for indoor CQB. Okay, so to kind of preface this, this place you could max out with a weight BB of 0.25. Okay, okay. Um, full auto was not legal, but burst was legal, like one to two second burst. And what was the other thing? Uh, what, oh, what about velocity? 400 FPS. Ooh, indoor at 400, that hurts. There's not very many yeah. of those. Yeah. Tip, mo- well, most of the time, they're 350. Yeah, most of right. the time. Most of the time, we're 350, and this the, the players that were there and that were part of this, they were a lot of Milton guys that came into this, and they're like, you know what? There's zero MED at any of these other places. My guns are already all set up for 400, and we're going to be men about this, so 400's where we're setting it. Oh, big boy Ooh. rules. So, yeah, you're be popping I mean, out of your chest with that stuff. Indoor CQB is also defined as, um, you know, you're limited on line of sight. Mm-hmm. Engagements right. are typically 25 to 50 feet. You're not going to shoot the entire pitch of, yep. of the arena. 
So right. you have to move to it's like, and then the other thing too, any good C, indoor CQB should be set up that it doesn't dead end. There should be some like the spawn should always be like not on the back and wall, and there's never a like, straight line. Yeah, you can always you should be able to end run around the spawns to do you know and do like loops instead of just pushing back people back to their spawn. What, what do you think uh, Dalton draws players to indoor CQB? Um, I think one of the things that draws people to indoor CQB is. Uh, kind of the the hotness in the media right now is like stuff with Steel Team Six. Um, there are lots of TV shows and stuff on right now about that. A lot of movies that are coming out, and most of what they do is that indoor tactical, you know, SWAT room clearing things like that. And when you have the background of Milsim or used to playing outdoor, and then can convert that inside, um, it's it's kind of wild when. You've got a group of speed softers because we had it happen a couple times where a group of speed softers would come in and want to play against us because we were Milsim guys, thinking that they would just completely roll us because of their, you know, fast, hardcore, in your face style. And we, being the Milsimers, were like, well, we're just going to tack them out and they're not going to know where we're at. And it was a very strange cat and mouse game almost. But I think oh, wow. a lot of the things that people are in inter- that are crazy about is that SEAL Team 6 style stuff. Yeah. Okay. So what actually I think is really cool about that comment is that um, having you know, I guess I'd call myself a Milsimmer. I don't know. I'm just a guy who shoots BBs. I don't care how I do it, you know. Amen. But, um, you know, having played, I've seen that trouble that people have that uphill battle when they come from like either big open field skirmishes and then they start playing with some of the fast runner guys. Um, because, you know, they, they're everywhere. And it's really, I think the, the, the biggest thing that turns a lot of Milsim players off from mixing in with the Speedsoft guys is they don't like that dude who just pops up out of nowhere. Like, that's scary when you're a Milsim guy. Because you're used to shooting longer ranges, 40, 50 meters, something like that. Well, because you know? you're also paranoid because yeah. that's just not somebody that's by themselves. You're usually yeah. thinking, oh, there's a squad or there's a platoon and... I've only got me and four guys with me. I have to say, though, the big advantage when you're going up against those guys, though, is they are not very good at pulling security. They focus in one direction. That's kind of how they practice. And so if you have a bunch of Milsim guys who at least, at the very least, are watching all the angles at once. Okay, no, 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 no. no. You, okay, you know? you, what you're doing is you're putting your your old team and your dynamics on everybody. On everybody because indoor CQBers, speed softers, I've witnessed so many. They check their corners so much harder, so much more really? consistent than a Milsim event player. Yes. Are you talking about coming into room check your corners? I'm talking more no, like no. You're standing still at watching doors, at, oh. at corners of buildings, at hallways. You know, we need to get out and play more speed soft then. Yeah, that, that's it. That's I guess my, I'm just, that's my opinion. I'm just un, I'm, I'm not experienced. I'm talking <laughs> out of my ass. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, Dalton. Man, always good to we talk to you, brother. Man. Hey, Hopefully we miss we can... you guys too. Thank you so much. All Dude, right, you rock, take brother. Care. Yeah. Oh, we're getting all kinds of callers today. Yeah. Cool. I haven't talked to Hawk in a while. I miss him. I know. He's a fun guy. All right. He uh, actually uh, he has quite the Russian kit for War Game Oklahoma. He's all oh, about he that. Oh, he does. Yeah. He does. So, um, next group that we're going to be talking about uh, is outdoor, but we're going to split it up into two categories. Okay. Okay. Out, for, first, we're going to talk about outdoor terrain. So what would be an example of a well-known field that's outdoor terrain that you could offhand? Uh, EMR Event Park. That's a good one. Or Bristol, like Black Ops. What would you call that urban? No. Okay. That's that's outdoor urban, which is the other category. So outdoor okay. terrain is is typically hard bunkers, like that are just pallets or just wooden walls or, you know, those big construction spools. That's a good one. Um, those are or, a classic. Or those, those Ti- blue plastic barrels that everybody gets to hold up. Or the, the tire bunkers. That's another good one. Tire bunkers. Tire bunkers are that's, classic. That's always good. Or actually, you know what my favorite ones are? The interweaved branch bunkers. I love when yes. people do that because people don't realize you can shoot through them on full auto. Basically, outdoor terrain, you are not, and you, this, this is his point. Mm. I'm going to steal it. You are not shooting from building to building. Yep. There's no buildings. You're shooting from bunkers to bunkers. So if you have a fort and there's no building that's within eight like AEG range, it's not interacting with the other buildings. It's not it's urban. A, it's yeah. It's outdoor terrain. You're, you're going from you're attacking from the outside in, so it's not it's all about what you interact on both sides of the shot, basically. So um, this is the this is the kind of like a middle ground. So you got your local recreation player and 
and your Milsim event player, but you're, it's kind of in between uh, those two. Um, so, like, I would say indoor CQB is probably your run-of-the-mill local rec player. Yeah. But when you start getting into outdoor terrain... Because some of these are kind of the middle of nowhere. Like right. Like, drive a little bit. I, I think it's, you have a little more experience when you're doing outdoor terrain versus indoor CQB. Um, also, the punishment for getting hit is a little bit more because you got a longer walk. These bigger fields, yes. you, I mean... Indoor CQB, you get shot, it's 15 seconds to go back to the back wall. Exactly. <laughs> Out here, you may have a 10-minute walk back to spawn, depending on what part of the field yep. they're using. You know? so, yep. um, they typically have, have a, a moderate amount of gear. Um, you know, This is where you really start seeing uh, helmets, uh, full uh, on plate carriers with the, yep. with the cummerbund. Um, ghillie suits start to show up here. The occasional ghillie suit. Even the, like, the, the Spartan Realtree ghillies, yep. the leaf suits. And you know what I'm seeing a ton of lately is the sniper veils. That's become really popular. Yeah. You a sniper veil to almost anything because it breaks up your outline wonderfully. As soon as and you take and it. typically, this is where the, the folks really start coming out in full camo matching top and bottom. Yep. Because uh, it's in, a necessity. Indoor CQB, it's like, eh. it's hodgepodge. It's, you know... Like, you can get, a, like, jeans and a t-shirt are just as effective as camouflaging you inside a brightly lit arena as, yep. you know, your, you know, $9,000 cry multi-lamps. So, just remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Be comfortable. Oh, uh, Tim Green says, uh, TC, TC Paintball and Airsoft has 52 acres of goodness. TC Airsoft, where's that at? Uh, Michigan. Michigan. Timothy, put it up. Think, put, a, put a link up there I so everybody Michigan, can check it's, it out. It's in the Michigan area. The Great, it's in the Great Lakes region. Yeah. <clears throat> I know that answer is correct. <laughs> there so, you go. So um, please put a, please put a link up to that so uh, any local players know if they yeah. haven't checked it out yet. They know that there's a new field that they uh, have command been decisions war game center. Good call. I Ricky really want to get to that place. I keep hearing good, that good things you're, about you're it. shooting from bunker to bunker except for uh, Lucky that one the city area right next to the safe zone that would be considered. Uh, outdoor urban so well that, command decisions uh war game center would actually be it would actually have both you it would actually me, have i was gonna actually ask about that because yeah. you got like places like you know emr has castles and then it has like little towns someplace you know what i mean sc village is another example of both outdoor fields with like no, sc, is, SC is village that, is that straight village? up urban. urban is it i outdoor thought they had urban. a couple of more flatter fields that didn't have buildings no they're just it. straight up outdoor okay. urban Hollywood Sports Park, Outdoor Urban. So, but there's got to be some place that have like both. That's where I was trying to get at. Like, Bal- well, there, there, there's be there's, there's a lot. Like, yes, Ballahack has both. Um, Black Ops Bristol has yep. both. Oh, oh we, got, we a got a call. Thanks for calling the Falcon Debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Devin Pedley. I'm from Pennsylvania. One more time, could you say your name? I you kind of slurred a little bit there. Yeah, this is Devin Pedley. I'm from Pennsylvania. Hey, what's Devin? up, Devin? How you doing, brother? Pretty good. How are you guys? Good. Uh, you know, just uh, enjoying a, 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 trying to stay warm on this chilly Colorado evening. <laughs> yep. It's, it's a little cold. Bit. It's a little chilly. Yeah, yeah. It's Hold probably on. cold out in PA, too. Yep, huh? turkey's done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, here, here in PA, it's about 20 degrees right now. <laughs> oh, well, you're five degrees warmer than us, because I think it's like 13 outside or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what, what would you like to talk about tonight? Or uh, uh, topic? I, I like outdoor, but I consider myself like an outdoor Milsim player. Well, how, what, what, how do you define yourself? Like, what's the characteristic that defines you as that? Like, the requirements for it? Um, well, I started as a paintballer, actually, and then went oh, okay. to indoor CQB. And then from there, I got actually employed by EMR. I'm a ref for EMR. Oh, not right, Timmy. Cool. You know Timmy. Because yeah. we Wait. are. Hold on, let's do it. Yeah, we, are. Okay. we are. We are. We are. EMR. There you go. Yeah. Wait, did, did I see you? <laughs> did I meet you at Bad Blood? Uh, yeah, we were, I was at Bad Blood, and I was also at uh, Red Storm East when they had a Scranton Waste. Oh, cool. Small world. Oh, wait. Did you help us put up the Valken tent at EMR? Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, there was, well, thank you for the There help. was two fine gentlemen yeah. that, that helped us put up that tent. Oh, there you go. See? Yeah, so that would be me, or, me and Ryan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> cool. So what is your defining, um, like, I guess, I don't know. I mean, why would you say you're an yeah. outdoor Milson player? There you go. Beat me to um, it. Because I, I've done, like, both, like, outdoor, like, domination-style games. And I've also done outdoor Milson games. 
So I actually prefer the Milsom, but outdoor. So what, like, how do you differentiate uh, Milsom from outdoor? What makes it Milsom? Thank you, Timmy, for putting that so in What chat. makes it Milsom is like the guys with nods and like you're going from like early in the morning through the night, you know. So it's more of like, a... That's what I would consider Milsom. Like it's more immersive. So the endu- like, like you're actually like using like you'll start off the day like just doing basic missions and then come nighttime that's when the guys switch over their nods and, so it's and an, stuff like that. So the endurance levels is kind of what makes the difference. Yeah, for you. yeah, yeah. The guys that stick it out all the way through. Now, the are you a full three? Do you, do you like to go three like straight through from Friday to Sunday, or are you more of a guy who oh, enjoys yeah. the, yeah. When the, I play, the rotational for the duration? Game. So you, so you don't to like for the duration of the weekend, yeah. Do you like meal breaks built in, or do you like those games like Milson West that just go straight through from start to stop? Um, I like I like taking a break, but I like the games that go straight through. Like I might take a break to eat and okay, so and, you uh, like it just dehydrate and stuff, but then I'll go right back out on the field. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you're a trooper. On what that one, um, but. how would what would you say are typical uh, guns? Um, Used in an outdoor event, an outdoor, an outdoor uh, I've, I've seen everything from guys running AGs up to HPA. I say the majority of the guys are running like HPA guns and like uh, more modified like LMG guns and stuff. You'll see, which so, you won't see like indoors or yeah, anywhere else. The like you even have snipers. Mm-hmm. You know? That's one definitive thing I, you never I, see. I think I think this outdoor yeah. this this first step in the outdoor is typically out of the box, four hundred FPS. Yep. That's out kind of, of the box. Yep, um, up, yes, yes. The minimum you're going to be working with is those mid-level guns, kind of like the three to four hundred dollar level gun. Yeah. is kind of what everybody's mm-hmm. working with. Yeah, yeah um, definitely. Because the focus here is out shooting your opponent at distance, so you don't have to worry yeah. about getting close. Especially because it's like a right, right, taking walk. them off one by one. Yeah, it's yeah. a twenty minute walk back to the fob most of the time. So, on a big so would base. you say there's uh, with outdoor games, it's it's slower movement? Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. Like, I consider myself outdoors, but everything I've learned was all, like, CQP tactics and stuff. So, like, they'll send me in, like, in the middle of, like, a town or something, and I'll just, like, kind of go like John Wick on some guy, you know? <laughs> gotcha. But, but I, I, run, I run a longer AG, like an AR-15 style okay. AG, mainly. Well, cool. Well, that's the first time I've heard someone say AR-15 instead of M4 style. So I like the I like yeah, the definitely not he's the shorter version. Yeah, he's, 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 he's old school. He's old school. Has a hop up style right in. Yeah. Oh no, it was just the terminology like, used made me laugh because everybody normally people say M4, not AR-15 because they use yeah. the military replica. Yeah, you know, I, like, I, like, I like taking the one or two shots instead of like the full burst on auto. You know. Right. Awesome, glad to hear. Well, man. thanks for so calling in, Dan. More accuracy, yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Nobody else was doing it, so I figured I would. Yeah, yeah go for it, Appreciate man. it, man. I don't know what happened to you the chat. You have a good one tonight. But, like, all of a sudden, there is thumbs up and love and reactions came out of nowhere. Like, I, don't, I think the chat's just having their own show and forgot oh, yeah. about us. Jeez. And uh, if you're just joining us, we're talking about different uh, Airsoft player uh, groups. We talked about Speedsoft first. We Then we moved into Milsim. Little event d- forget, player. Don't forget, there's a wait. Let me see if I can get it right here. Yeah, right here-ish. There should be on your screen, like you know the the, the poll. Oh, the poll to vote. Yeah. What kind of airsoft player are you? There you go. Um, there's four choices. After we talked about a Milsim event player, we then got into an indoor CQB player. Which is oh jeez. Oh, we'll just let just let it go. Thanks for calling the Falcon debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Ethan again. Yeah, it's Ethan again. We should just like start waiting for the calls to come in and just hold the phone up to each other. Is there a way we can do I, that? Like, we can just go take a break. Cups and string. Yeah, we can cups just have the two calls talk to each other and we're good to go. What's up, Ethan? <laughs> I'm down. No, um, I was going to say when you guys were talking about Urban and the other outdoors, I love the mix of both because that's what our field and that's what T1 is. They've got oh, a so- bunch of buildings in the middle. And we've got wooded areas surrounded everything. So you have a, a good mix of urban terrain mm-hmm. and yep. or outdoor terrain and outdoor urban. Yep. Now, is it all in play at once or is it segregated where, you know, the games are broken off like some people are playing in the urban portion while some in the woods and then there's a specific stoppage and you switch or is it all, all at once? one big field? It, 
it is one big field, but we allocate. So on like a Saturday game, we get started at twelve or something. It's like, okay, we're gonna you play guys get in started late, man. Yeah, twelve o'clock. But that's a, like nine o'clock is normally like gates open most places. Like you guys are okay. Late yeah, we, we get there at nine. Okay. Yeah. But literally, you're lucky that if a game starts by ten thirty. Oh no, I'm not saying it actually starts by then. I'm just saying <laughs> that, like you know that's still <laughs> earlier than noon. I'm just saying like. You have to stop yeah. and have a cup of coffee and bullshit with some of your friends. So, so, so at T1, where you, where you have your outdoor field, um, what kind of games are, are played at, at these out, out, at outdoor fields? We, we play a lot of objective games, and the occasional we'll play the hostage games. We do play a couple of milsom style games, the attack and defend, one life games. Those are really fun. You know what I like about hostage games? I always like being the hostage because I try to free myself. <laughs> you I just would. I just wait you for would. them to like turn their back on me and I'll grab like a you know grab the rifle out of their hands yeah. or something like that. Like I'm the captain now. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. I've so. seen guys use fake razors like airsoft razors, and this is in an older field, and you hide them in their back pocket and just have a bunch of them hide them everywhere. And at the very beginning, you just use this fake razor. To, You're dead now, and run. Oh, run that's, that's, that's actually so really cool. I need to look that up. So, I need one. You know, we, we talk about speed softer, five minute rounds. Uh, Milsim is all weekend. Indoor CQB is like 10, 15 minute. Outdoor is going to be about twenty minute rounds. Probably. I don't know. What do you, that's what. That's what, 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 what what's the time frame for for your outdoor games that you have at T one? So for King of the Hill, I think we've. It goes, ranges from probably 15 minutes to 25 minutes. It just depends on how many people are there that day and what's, what's going on. You know what's weird for me is that I always feel the time when I'm at a field, the, the timing of the game is always wrong. Because if things are really, I'm really into like, you know, what's going on and I got a good back and forth mm-hmm. going with someone, maybe getting shot, walking back to, you know, trying to clear an area or I'm bouncing around trying to get the new angles. Like it always seems those are the games that like right when you find the perfect angle, that's when the whistle blows because you're engaged. Yep. But the games that you're just not into it seem to go on forever because well, I, you mm-hmm. just, you're not like, I think that comes it, from your, you know? your, your Milsom event experience too because you're, you're used to that slower buildup. Yeah. You know, where... You know, at an outdoor terrain field, you have to recreate what would normally happen in three hours in, in like, like 30, 30 minutes. 30 yeah. minutes, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's a lot faster. I was just more saying mm-hmm. it always feels wrong. Like, that's not actually if it is the wrong yeah, time, it just I, feels I wrong. I feel you yeah. there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you're having fun, it goes too yeah. fast. <laughs> well, cool. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for calling back, Ethan. Always a pleasure. Yep. Later. See you guys later. All right. Who we got? What do we All got right. here? Where are we at our list? So we are we are now talk, going to talk about um, oh, did urban we, did or we outdoor urban. Did you did you say the drop leg thing? Because remember, outdoor players have drop legs. Very yes, important. outdoor players you have drop legs. <laughs> drop legs. Indoor players normally have it on their hip. Just a difference. That's true. Yep. Indoors on their hip, or they're just carrying it because that they're just running a pistol. Also, out, this is where you start seeing the guys with the LCs. Because I know LCs are becoming real popular again with outdoor players. Outdoor terrain is where you really start seeing like, like battle belts. surplus, yeah, gear, surplus gear from your from your local army. And without fail, store. there's always. I've never been to a field outdoor game that you didn't either have the World War II guy, the Vietnam guy, or the 1980s guy. He's always there. There's one of the three. You know what I mean? Like I've never seen the 80s. It's either it's either I typically see uh, Warsaw. Yep. NATO Warsaw um, era. Um, Every once in a while, I see Vietnam, but I typically always see the World War II guys. I forgot Almost his always. name, but there's a guy who plays locally in the Springs, and every time I play with him, he always has like a Bosnia kit on. So we're talking like oh, late nineties, like Paschit helmet, just when they when you know Paschit vest, the whole like. Oh, when you said Bosnia, I was yeah. like, oh, a distraction? I mean, no, no, <laughs> I'm talking like American Army in the Bosnia time frame. You know what I mean? You probably, what, you probably have some pictures. What was that, that, that movie? Like um, Stealth. Yes. yes. Yeah, that was a good one. What was the actress's name? Uh, Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel, because she was running away from... Hold on just a moment. Okay, you're, you're, think, you're thinking about where she's exercising on the bouncy ball in her quarters. Not right? at all. I'm thinking about the scene <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the bikini with a waterfall. Tim, Timmy from uh, EMR Event Park, he says we get <laughs> all of the above. I'm sure, I'm sure you do, Timmy. Hawk says there's always the World War II dude. I actually ran into there a always British is. World War II dude um, the last time I was oh, at the field. Oh, that's interesting. He even had a Tommy too. gun and a Sterling. But he wouldn't use the drum mag because the Brits didn't have the drum mag. So now, i got to give crap. props to uh, those that wore that wear uh, early era 
wore attire because it's all made of wool. Well, God. no, the other thing too is they they actually go out and seek out airsoft guns. Yeah, to be accurate too. You know, so in that it's not easy and cheap to find. There's typically special order ordering from overseas. Speaking just of weird airsoft look. guns, did you get that uh, picture I sent you from Reddit with Jin's blaster? They have the Jin blaster kit where you get a Luger and you put a new barrel assembly on it, and it looks like Jin's blaster for airsoft now. Oh, did you, did you miss that? I, okay. I saw it, but I mean, it, I thought it, it was didn't. Cool. It didn't look exactly, so it, didn't, it was, it was it didn't, close enough. It didn't phase me. It was no, close enough. No, when it's Star Wars, there's never close enough. It's either oh exact. Oh my god, you're, you call me a fanboy. You're so bad <laughs> about this. You're, it's not. It's not movie correct. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we've got outdoor urban, um, which this is where you, you are now fighting from building to building. But you're still dealing with some of the challenges that you would in indoor The CQB. buildings must be able to interact with each other. Yes. It's very important. Yeah. You, you can actually engage uh, effectively from one building to the next. Um, as you can see in the, the image there, um, very, it's a very good mix between outdoor and Milsim. Not quite decked out like Milsim, um, but... You know, typically uniforms. Mm -hmm. They're matching top and bottoms. Um, and that's a necessity. you got to yeah. blend before you get to the buildings. Uh, helmet, mesh mask, uh, full cover plate carriers. I just um, can't do the helmet. It gets too hot under there. Yeah. I'm wearing a helmet. Typical uh, out-of-the-box rifles can be anywhere from 350 to 380 or 400. You know, I'll, here, and here's something that I like about this kind of field design is this is the great equalizer for the rental gun player. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, they will have buildings that are just the right distance that you can't fully take advantage of flat hop guns. So you have about that 30 to 50 meter right. range that they're going to keep the buildings at. So that even if you have the super hot gun... A, four, a 400 FPS gun is not going to help you in outdoor urban. You're going to be equalized just as much as the kid with a 350 FPS gun just because of... The layout mm -hmm. of the urban area. It's about angles, guys, not about yep. the size of the field. Because if you can't actually see from one point to another, you can't shoot there. There's, oh, there's, there goes Timmy. Castles are the only real buildings. Timmy, you missed it. We actually said that... Any you know, building that's not near another building. Yes, if you can't shoot from one structure, one building to the next... They're all castles. It's not urban. So... Um, you got big castles, but sometimes, you know, the other buildings are, like, really far away. So they're individual castles. They're I'm forts. messing with Timmy. They're not. <laughs> I'm messing with Timmy. You know, you know your general flag that's in your living room? If it's near another general flag, then that's urban. If they're separate, then that's just <laughs> structures. Got it? Yeah. <laughs> um, outdoor urban, uh, t the players typically focus on uh, maneuvering and surprising uh, their opponents because there's a lot of blind spots. Do you know who's made the bet? Who has the mo the best outdoor urban field to play at? I've seen so far hmm. is Silo when he makes his videos from Belgium or wherever that field he oh, goes Silo to. Oh, Silo Entertainment. Yeah, with the like the three story brick buildings and they got like half the castle and the trenches and the up and down. Well, that's an, that's, that's actual right. property though. Yeah, that's no, not, but that's cool. That's that's what I'm but saying. That's like not that's, something that's built. But it's the best example of kind of what we're talking about. Like you know, no. in terms of urban, it's a we're talking about like, United States. But aren't we all our one, field owners? One they one so? they okay. create, they make their buildings, they make their structures. That is true. We don't have old medieval and World War II bunkers to build on. We, yeah, we have been peaceful in this country for too long. <laughs> so we need a good war. So we have, we need a good civil war or something like that. So we can have some good places to play airsoft once we you know rebuild from the war. Yeah. So um, we've covered so we've covered five major categories of a player. We've said speedsoft. Yep. Uh, we've said Milsim event player. Outdoor? No, we said indoor CQB. Oh, that's right. And then outdoor... Outdoor terrain. terrain. Outdoor and urban. Outdoor urban. So uh, let's go to the poll and see where we're at in numbers. Let's see how smart our audience is compared to... So, well, not smart. They're just they're saying what type of player they are. So in our audiences so watching... So does our audience reflect the greater airsoft community is what we're going to test? We're going to find out. I know. So right now, currently, Milsim... Players are seventy three percent. Seventy three percent of our viewers are Milson players. Twenty one percent are outdoor players. Six percent are indoor players, and nobody is actually we voted as a as a speed soft. Broken player. into the speed soft demographic, apparently. No. Um, we, how do we get into that market? We have not. 
Do we have to offer like a free mask or something, or maybe some like cleats or some elbow pads instead I have of grenades? No idea. Do they not use grenades in speed cell? So I wanted to dig a big, bit further to because a lot of it is is our opinion. Yeah. You know, and it's based on your paradigm, your bubble, as it will. So I did a, a bunch of keyword searches uh, on Google. Google's a wonderful thing now, and I just wanted to share uh, a bunch of these results with everybody. So. For example, when I put Airsoft into Google, just Airsoft, yep. comes back with 369 million results. That's more than I would think. That's a lot. Yeah, that's kind of... That is a there's lot. There's 369 million people who want to play Airsoft. Where are they all? And Airsoft Event, 143 million. Airsoft Outdoor, 100 million. Uh, Airsoft Field, 57 million. So I'm kind of curious what's the difference between uh, Airsoft Outdoor and Airsoft Field, because that's very interesting. Um, Airsoft Indoor is 17.6. Field's kind of a blanket term. It is. Yeah, yeah. You know. It is. Um, but if field was just an, a blanket term, I mean, wouldn't you that think it would be, be higher? Yeah, that's yeah. why it doesn't make sense. Um, Airsoft CQB is 9.3 million, and Airsoft Scenario is 3.3 million. So, for you guys who are producing events and you're doing your hashtagging, can you throw that back up there real quick? Those those. No, those hold terms? on. Oh, we got Keep one going. Keep going. So when you're doing your hashtagging, that this is how many times these words get searched. So if you're making an airsoft post, hashtag airsoft. Hashtag air, airsoft. <laughs> airsoft event. Airsoft outdoor. These are your top tags you can throw on there. And I hate to say it, but saying scenario or milsim is not actually so up there. You notice milsim and speedsoft weren't up there. Mm -hmm. I would like to see viewers put in the chat what percentage. They just put milsim, and then or how, how many, many million? Yeah, maybe and maybe. then speedsoft, how many million? How many, how many hits do you think Google kicks back? And don't cheat, don't do it. Yes, I think. Okay. Well, I mean, our, our audience is going to take like forty minutes to find the analytics on Google anyway. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I, I think I think folks will actually be um, surprised with this, especially since the majority of our viewers are seventy two percent. Milsim players. You ready, to, so, ready to drop some skyants on them? Finally? Yeah, let's drop some let's drop some skyants on them. Knowledge. So here we go. Here are the the keyword searches again, from highest to lowest. Mm -hmm. What's up, and, Tom Hall? What's How's up, going over there in Utah? With your 500 <laughs> FPS goodness. So Milsim and Speedsoft came in last. So it seems to me that what these numbers are showing us is that the most vocal part of the airsoft community is actually the smallest. The smallest, it is. Smallest, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, our sport really is carried by a small, hardcore group, and then there's a lot of, I hate these term casuals, but if you only play about once every quarter or so, you would, I guess, be called a casual. You know what I mean? So, right. you know. And it just shows you that, you know, if Milsim, if Milsim is, the, is, is the small, and also Speedsoft is the small, um... And you have this big bucket of recreational players, whether they play outdoor or indoor, that is the future of the hobby. I'm going to give an unpopular opinion right now. You ready for it? Oh, go for it. The people that we all hate the most, quote unquote, that drive us the nuts the most, the nuts at the field, these are the people that require the most guidance and patience because if we don't keep them around for the second time or the third time at the field, there's going to be no more people to play with. So I think people kind of forget that you know just true, throw it out there true that throw it out well also little, little i did <laughs> i did some work um with airsoft c3 um if you've never been there airsoftc3.com um it's it's a map of the united states and it's broken down by airsoft teams airsoft fields airsoft shops wait are you saying my that, state that if i host airsoft events there's a place i can go to find all this information like do my own homework if i need to target no, my audience no, no no if you are looking for airsoft fields or airsoft stores well, yeah or you just move to an area and you're looking for a team okay so that's how you not do necessarily it. events but but you could yeah. in theory maybe find out what's hot there and so yeah. if you if you've ever gone there there are 300 and, you just click on the field section there's 359 fields and so i wanted to kind of get an accurate depiction believe it or not the top five states is one third of that population so one third of airsoft fields in the united states are only in five of the 50 states so here it is 
So you know what the statistic would tell me? Is that the more fields you have as part of your local business community of Airsoft, the stronger all the fields are. It seems that having yeah. more fields is better, not worse. That's right. you know? So, you know, obviously California being the home of Airsoft has the most at 32, all the way down to Ohio coming in fifth at 14. And the breakdown for each state is actually reflects pretty accurately what the total average is among these five states. So uh, 79% are outdoor fields, which is a combination of terrain and urban, mm -hmm. outdoor fields. 16% are indoor fields, and 5% actually have both an indoor and outdoor field. Now, I got a bone to pick with your research real quick, because you have this place at the bottom. Can you pull that back up real quick? Sorry. Well, I mean, you, you can see right there. It's at the bottom? Okay. Yeah. Well, our audience can't see it when I point at it. But this <laughs> this Ohio place, that's not a real place. <laughs> You keep talking, I mean, you... I, I, they have 14 fields. For, for a place that doesn't exist that seems to have a lot of airsoft. It does. You know what I mean? Like, um, it does. It it's actually, a mythical place. It actually does. It's like the Netherlands. It's not real. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, really, if... if Now, after us talking about the different groups, because groups now are not really dictated by style. Of play, they're dictated it's, by our engagement range. No, it's it's oh. dictated first by their environment, but secondly, which comes in a close second, is the gear that they own. It's oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. It's not, and it's not by because you would think because we just always play Milson all the time, so we naturally think oh whoa, 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 Milson's whoa, whoa, the whoa, biggest. Whoa. Don't let me in with that white man. Yeah, like the closest right. we business. <laughs> like I go play locally. I'm I'm part of the community. I, I get I get all my skirmish goodness in. Yeah. See you on Sunday, Marcelo. So you can actually group the demographics by the type of equipment they use. You know, and we just talked about it. We we talked about what Speedsoft community uses, what the Milson community uses what indoor CQB players like to use, what do outdoor terrain and outdoor urban, and people gravitate to those area, those groups based on what they have and what they prefer. Well, is, is this partly regional as well? Um, because if you're from like a place like Long Island, no, because you think there'd be more indoor than outdoor. When you, you, know? when you, look, at, when you look at these numbers, all five of those states, the top five states, you know, the, the percentage of outdoor fields, 78, 82, 91, 67, 71, you know. Um, now, given you might have more indoor mm -hmm. at colder climate, you know, states, but, I, you know, it's it, the outdoor field is still going to dominate. The Florida, Georgia, that kind of surprises me, but California and Texas in no way surprised me that they're top in the list. I mean, that Tex that Dallas community just by itself in Texas is stronger than statewide communities in most other states. Yeah. And they have El Paso, which is on the rise right now. Um, you know, our, uh, um, AR-15 down there are doing some rad stuff and, and building up that community. Um, and in the Houston area also, um, had some rough spots recently, but is on the way back up and there, it's a new field. Spindletop is near the, and also Tanks is down there in the, uh, Houston area. So that does not surprise me. They have good weather, winter and summer, and a really strong two-way culture. So it's not yeah. shocking at all that Texas is second on the list. I mean, California's got the nerd culture driving it, not the two-way culture, but I definitely would say two-way culture is driving it in Texas. So after everything we've talked about, if we're if we want to categorize uh, players based on outdoor urban, outdoor terrain, mm -hmm. indoor CQB, Milsim event, and speed soft, um, you know, viewers, what do you think uh, these percentages would would break out as? Well, I think they're going to break down to match the fields. Because well, I mean, the fields I, to play. At, I mean, our viewers just said our we have seventy two percent of our viewers are Milsim players. Yeah, but like. The, we're, we're not talking about the elephant in the room here, which is that like like a lot of the viewers are our friends that we, we know from Milson. That is true. So it's kind of a an echo chamber we're talking into right now uh, to a certain extent. And, you know, Tom Hall says outdoor fields are just less expensive to operate. I'd be curious. Yeah. You know, I mean, paying for land is paying for land. Well, we have the small... I mean, here in Colorado, we have, we have this lovely fact that... 
it's often cheaper to build new stuff than to re- re- renovate things. So, like, when businesses go under, often the buildings just stay empty. Well, and I think Tom, well, I think what you Tom, know, yeah, what Tom is getting to, though, and I just and realized there's other that factors that are taking up those empty buildings. I won't say it out loud. In, but indoor you know facilities, there's, uh, you know, zoning, there's yep. uh, city ordinances. Stuff. Oh, fire is a big thing. Insurance is way more because you actually have to have, like, bathrooms and all Anything that Anything within stuff. city limits, you know, yeah, yeah you have to have... Uh, I remember Tenant Tactical. He actually has to have a bathroom in Oklahoma for every so many feet. Not based on occupancy. Occupancy. It's so many feet. Per he bathroom. Has to, he has to have a bathroom. That's like a like a like a turd. So there's policy. actually a bathroom in the indoor arena. T- TPM turd per mile. There you go. <laughs> well, I, people don't typically use it. No. But it it, ha- it has to well, meet the requirement. And, and if you have an outdoor field, I mean, like. If you want to serve hot dogs or something for lunch at your outdoor field, the requirements from the health inspector are a lot less yeah. than if you want to serve anything indoor. Because, like, if you're indoor, you, you got to have, like, a real kitchen. you got to get inspected. If you're just doing a grill, that's a whole different, you yeah. know, a couple hot dogs in the grill, it's a whole different Yeah, experience. Timmy Hanley so, from EMR says a ton of overhead with when it comes to indoor fields. and Because well, you, you got to keep the lights on, literally. You have to run electricity and air no, conditioning and all that other stuff. But, uh, but also, you know... Outdoor fields, you know, I'd be curious of who gets who gets more foot traffic, you know, because you would think outdoor fields typically open uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They get larger numbers, mm-hmm. but those indoor fields, you know, you get kids coming after school, you get kids coming on the weekends. Well, you, got, you also, in the, some of those outdoor fields, you got the unicorn, like uh, Hollywood Park has the whole light system set up for a couple of your fields. Yeah, They have, like, stadium light. And so the question is... If more fields had lighting set up for nighttime play, would they also have more night more players that would come after school and stuff for outdoor play, not just indoor play? Like I think yeah. that's I think visibility is a limiting factor, not necessarily indoor outdoor. Right. So yeah. so here here is here's the demographic of the player, you know, of, of me going through and combining everything that we've talked about tonight. And outdoor urban is at the top, fifty five percent of the player base plays outdoor urban so they're they're playing 350 to 380 fps guns out of the box they're wearing uniforms they're wearing gear and helmet but you know it's airsoft gears and a helmet um and then the occasional uh sorry i'm, I'm, surplus la- player. I'm laughing because tom hall just said uh isn't it shocking that the indoor like the entertainment capital of the country las vegas doesn't have an indoor field because rent is too high. Uh, well, yeah. That just made me laugh that because when sense. we were at SHOT Show, I got a lot of questions. For, like, when people would find out what we did, they'd be like, oh, Airsoft's really cool. I've seen that on uh, you know, YouTube. I'd love to go play. Where can I go play in Las Vegas? And I would Google it, and there wouldn't be anything for like 100 miles. Yeah. So that's kind of a – just brings up a Tim from uh, EMR says outdoor does too, but indoor has more of the cleanup aspect to it. Yeah, yes. I totally get it. So outdoor terrain – Makes up twenty percent. Do of they the population. use brooms or like a what? What if for indoor owners out there? How do you clean up the BBs? Do you guys have like a leaf sucker or a leaf blower, or do you guys brush them? I always wondered. What's the best technique? Or maybe just like a home vacuum? Like it's a based vacuum? on the size of the facility. Okay. And how much revenue? Ooh, what if someone made like a zamboni for BBs out of like? Because there's but there's not enough room to maneuver an indoor field. You need to play tiny, more indoor fields. A tiny zamboni, like a little tiny. <laughs> that one, would like, not be like a baby zamboni. That would not be money effective. It'd be cool, though. No. So, um, so based on this, 75% of the player base is at an outdoor field. Yeah. Well, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, let's look at what we have locally. We have one indoor field and three outdoor fields locally. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it, may, it carries out across yep. at least our local demographics. Indoor CQB, 15%. Which, this, these numbers are matching what we talked about across the five major states. Out of those 112 fields, 79% were outdoor, 16% were indoor, and 5% actually well, had and both. What's kind of crazy is that these numbers match up with the fact that it looks like if you open it, people will play there. Like, that's kind of the kicker of this, is that, like, the numbers match where they have to play because if there's more outdoor areas more people are going to play outdoor if there's not a lot of indoor places not a lot of people are going to play indoor so you you see we're (laughs) we're at 90 percent of the player base going to 
you know, and I, I'm just going to throw up here also Milsim and Speedsoft. Maybe because maybe the reason we don't 7% have any, of the player base. Maybe the reason we don't have any Speedsofters in the Milsim. audience is we can't find them. They don't exist. They're like, they're <laughs> mythical. They're a unicorn. Uh, and 3% are Speedsoft. Maybe Speed QB is actually all of the Speedsofters in America. They just got together for that tournament yeah. and they're nowhere else. Well, and, and think <laughs> about it too. When you think about Airsoft products in the Airsoft market, the, the companies that sell to. Milson and Speedsoft is very niche. Yep. You don't have a lot of the airsoft industry selling to Milson because they're, remember, 80 20. 80% of their money is spent on real industry well, gear, and not then, airsoft companies. And stuff. like we were talking about earlier about upgrading your Milson gun, some of the features that you're looking for in a Milson gun are contradictory to your average indoor player. Correct. Wanting a very snappy single shot. That you fire one or two rounds that are very accurate compared to a weight of fire of either a very snappy trigger or a nice full auto gun because you're just hosing up close as as fast as you can to hope to get them because it's come down to it's you know speed soft one hpa that's why it's okay to have these smaller companies like wolverine uh polar star uh redline that that make great products but they're serving a very small percentage of the market. Yep. But but that's that's what who they're feeding. Well, and that's as long who as they, they care get about. all of that market, that's a completely viable space to be in because yes. they are completely filling that niche. Now, I think what we saw a little while ago was that there was there seemed to be more companies in that space than there was players. But mm-hmm. thankfully, the player base has caught up with the. Um, with the with the amount like because you know you had like one or two you had Polar Star was the first right yep. um, and then you had um, Wolverine came on second or who was the second HPA company I can't remember I think it was I'm missing one of them there's one I'm missing but like the, no there, there were there was there was Polar Star yep and then who came out there was who was right after him was it Wolverine or was it the other one I'm missing it was Valken with the V12 was it okay actually so there you go then Wolverine then Redline if I got that yeah, correct Redline yeah. that was that was the company I was forgetting yeah and it seems that. There was like one company with skin in the game, and everybody just had the Polar Stars when mm-hmm. I first started playing. And then I started to see a little bit of everything. And then you started to, you know, kind of see that s- the sales were maybe slowing a little bit because there was many companies competing for the same little slice. Now the market has grown a little bit. Everybody's kind of stayed around. Rich which is nice. Gully, who comes from a paintball background, is making a very good point. He says a lot of airsoft fields he has seen are only there because there was a paintball field there yep. first. When I go in and look at the majority of these airsoft fields on airsoft C3, it's skirmish paintball, Robin Hood paintball, Fighter Town USA. Yeah. All these outdoor fields started as paintball. And for whatever reason, when that industry started, you know, you know, everything comes in ebbs and flows and peaks and valleys. When it was taking a dip, they looked to airsoft as it was growing, and they inc- incorporated. Well, heck, you know, I could still have paintball on my air air mm-hmm. bunker fields, and on my hard bunker fields or my urban part of the field, I can still have airsoft and Someone needs still to have make a profitable bunkers, weekend. That is both good for airsoft and paintball at the same time. What's that? Some, like, you know, I, I would, I, I love those bunker fields I see at like covert ops and stuff in town. I would love to play some airsoft on them, but they're really worried about getting damaged to their bump bunkers from the BBs. And so I would really love to see a company that makes a bunker, inflatable bunker that's compliant for both so that I could actually get out there and maybe, maybe speed soft a little bit. You know, just, just pride my horizons. You know, in Hong Kong, they actually use uh, six millimeter water BBs. I've seen that the gel balls. The gel they balls, make a weird yeah. sound. It's like a shh sound when that. But it is fire. the most like Nerf is popular. Nerf and laser tag are popular with our younger crowd here mm-hmm. in Asia. Gel, gel ball is the training. Yep, uh, New Zealand because that's all you could do in New Zealand was gel yep. ball because New Zealand has airsoft. Australia is the one that doesn't have airsoft. One of the two. What's yeah. one of them. So New Zealand's the small one with the little bird. Australia is the big yeah. one with the desert and the snakes and all that other stuff. Ow. You were eating too many milk sandwiches. You came in too late. Milk sandwiches? We're about to go to our event segment, but you can always watch the rewind. So, Where can oh, we find that rewind? Is that on, uh, YouTube? Is that on Facebook and YouTube? YouTube and, at Falcon Video or SoundCloud. And if you don't want to see our pretty faces, you can hit us up on SoundCloud. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna publish these uh, results that everybody's gonna, gonna make everybody everybody know about it. Yep. So <gasps> oh, 
Mr. Red Wolf West has shown up finally. Oh, he Mr. Came to Mark. Say hi. Mr. Mark seems to say he hi. He says, not going to lie, gel balls are fun as hell. Yeah, I, I think that'd be yeah. a good office game. I, I'd like to go chase each other around the office <laughs> and do that. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yep, yep. So we're gonna shot his foot once for science. <laughs> oh my gosh! He does. Mark does a lot of things for science. I remember when the forty mic grenade came out. Mark donated himself for science for that. I don't want to hear the rest of that story because yep. I feel it's inappropriate. <laughs> oh, you should see. Uh, Mark did a, a video on on Red Wolf where they were. I believe they were testing um, one of a uh, new grenade, and he tested it at an indoor facility. And the roof I saw that had yep, the fluorescent tubes. And they knocked it, like half the panels on the roof down or oh knocked out a light or something. Yeah, that was good. It was funny. That was, that was a good thing. No, they were, it was the Tornado 2. Um, because remember, oh, that's right. It was the Tornado 2. Our test similarly had some issues because most of that BB grenade went into my shin. You and did. And actually <laughs> doing the showery spinny thing because I didn't set the pin right. Yeah. And... You got Jordan and Jonathan from AI. I know you guys watch this after the fact. Feel free to laugh your ass off about that. I know you did the first time. <laughs> All right. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break. We actually have a lot of events between now and the end of April. We're, I mean, are, are we not going to accept any more events? Because I'm tired. This is too many to read. We're gonna, it's just going to be the whole second hour. No, I mean, this is, this is how it works. I mean, people are now realizing this is the best way to spread the news What's about the, their events. Well, why wouldn't they? This is the number one show in Airsoft. Biggest, biggest budget. Biggest budget. Biggest viewer count. Yep. Biggest hosts. And I don't know about that. Maybe. Yeah, why not? We'll go we're with gonna it. we're going to get our own channel. Oh, we get our own channel. That's right. Our own Airsoft channel. It's going to be the first Airsoft channel ever on YouTube. N- no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> really All right. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back talking about events. And you can also keep chatting in... in in the chat group about the events as we're talking about them because we're always wondering because there's events that we had never been to that you know we'd like some information and on. please do not send them one more time to our personal accounts send it to the Vulcan, Vulcan airsoft facebook page, page. and yep. please give us a little blurb when you do that about if it's not just a standard milsom event or anything you want us to say because we can't promote it if we don't know what it is yep it's in your best interest <laughs> all right don't go anywhere we're going to be right back Am I go- are we going? What's going on, guys? It's Nigel with Elite Force. Check out the Falcon debrief. Debrief? Try one more time. <laughs> Check out my briefs. Check out the briefs. What's going on, guys? It's Nigel with Elite Force. Check out the Falcon debrief every Thursday at 8 p.m. These are the Falcon Bravo gloves. They have a synthetic leather palm with reinforced areas and extra grip prints. They are made with breathable fabric and include a reinforced shooting finger and neoprene wrist closure. These gloves come in either black, olive, or tan colors. Thank you for watching and please leave us a review to tell us what you think. We are back. The Falcon <laughs> Debrief Airsoft Live Show, episode number 116. We just got done talking about uh, different airsoft players. I can tell you what, Dan Marino better be scared because that last commercial, I mean, if you guys are old enough to remember the Dan Marino Isotoner commercials, got nothing on this guy. I was just trying nothing. to do the Ricky Bobby impression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. So I actually heard the uh, this Bravo gloves are good for catching footballs as well. I can't confirm that, but yep. uh, it's not. we're not claiming it as a company, but I'll, I'll put it out there. <laughs> so the Falcon Debrief event segment is brought to you by Elite Force Airsoft. Do we got that beautiful M&P up there again? We do. We do. Oh, I forgot. I got to go to my copy here. Um, this week's product feature is going to be the Smith & Wesson M&P 40 gas blowback pistol. Shoots 300 FPS with a CO2 magazine. Mm. Um, this is a gun that holds a special place in your heart, isn't it? It is. I used to I used to carry that as, as a deputy in Northern California. If you and wonder why they're called military and police is because the police really like them. You know where you can get this? <laughs> your local Falcon, Falcon dealer. dealer store or field. All your elite force goodness. I, I yep. mean, oh, it's a, I'm not it's a Smith & Wesson guy, but that's a... It's, it's clean. That feel, it's, it's, it's clean. It's clean. That Simple and I really like that new that Dan Wesson revolver they got. That just it just feels like I'm gonna yeah. pull over a a, hip, a hippie in the '60s or something like that with that, you know? Yeah. All right. So 
Take us through to events, Mr. Peltast. All right, we got coming up first Operation A New Dawn. Is it Operation New Dawn Three or A New Dawn? Because isn't there another New Dawn? A New Dawn. A if, New Dawn. If it said Op, it would have been put in there. Okay, A New Dawn Three Academia Redux. This is not the event that Hawk proposed to his wife at. <laughs> <laughs> it was at this location, a different event. Um, February 22nd, Midwest region. Uh, Mere Tactical is going to be hosting this at the Apollo High School in Burlington, Ohio. Remember, oh, Iowa, excuse me, not Burlington, Vermont. Because if you go to Burlington, Vermont, you're going to be in the wrong place. Uh, <laughs> coming up after that, we got Operation Bone Strike 4, February 21st to the 23rd. Southern region, Third Coast Airsoft event in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Um, that's going on right now. Or tomorrow is when that's starting. Unfortunately, we did not get to join that because of Stinking weather snow. here. And uh, we got a two-wheel drive van, so we thought that you might want to see our faces more than, you know, last week because we're in a fiery pile of snow somewhere. So we didn't make it. Sorry, Sal, but we will see you. Well, actually, I won't. But this we guy did. will see in South Carolina in a short four but weeks. But we did send him some goodness. Yeah, if you're at um, Bone Strike right now, we sent some really useful prizes to that raffle. Stuff. I mean, there's a, what, what's in there? Just you want to give them a little, little, little no. teaser? A little teaser? No. no. Because because the the folks that are there that they they like to be surprised. They want to be surprised. Yeah, okay, they yeah. Like just, to be surprised. just no. We, we were thinking airsoft player at heart. Some stuff you yep. actually need. So it's not going to be one of those straight to hop up after their prize packages. So enjoy, guys. Um, coming after that, we got Road to Kharkiv. Also this weekend, Pacific Region, Milsim West is hosting this joint at Hill 559 in Clovis. Um, remember, guys, this is a full immersive event. Um, you need to be good to go head to toe. You need to have a ruck ready to go with all your stuff to pack in. So please don't show up at this late date unprepared to survive in the woods for the weekend because you will have a very uncomfortable weekend. Um, coming up after that, we got Red Dawn 10. This is March 15th in the Midwest region. Mere Tactical is hosting this at Badlands Paintball Field in Crete, Illinois. You've been to Badlands, haven't you? No, I have not, actually. Have you not been to? Nope. Well, you know, if anybody knows about Badlands, throw something in the chat so everybody can uh, get an idea. But once again, another Mere Tactical. Please check them out and support them in your local area. Um, that's Badlands with a Z, by the way, like they're orcs. Um, like, Apocalypse. Like, like the... TV show, Into the Badlands. Yeah, well, no, that's with an S. Oh, dang it. But, like, what makes stuff orky is if you, like, there's several rules for that. Like, so, like, everything that ends with a Z, so it's, like, you know, like, shoot us. So, would Top Guns be yes. a movie about fighter pilots that are orcs? That would be orc fighter pilots. Oh, cool. Um, also, anything painted red goes faster automatically. Just because it is. I heard that. That's how it yeah. works. Um, there's a whole gestalt psychic field <laughs> going on, but I won't get into that. Um, let's just say that red means faster and better shooters. Um, Apocalypse 5, March 14th, um, Northeast region. Did I, did I skip Red 10? No, we already, we already did Red 10. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's what, this is now. Yeah, you need that's to the past here. right here. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Lucky, lucky, see, there's 40K fans in there right there, see? He knew what I was talking about. <laughs> Apocalypse 5, March 14th, uh, Otherworld Milsim event at Skirmish Paintball in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. Otherworld, good people doing unique Paul small Whitman events. Paul Whitman. From Jackal Tactical. He's been on this show a couple times, hasn't he? He's, He's been, been on the show once, yep. Yeah. Once? Only once? We, yep. should, we should solve that maybe twice in the future. Or three times. Who knows? Well, we may, may, him and I may do a live show from Anaheim, California in August during Star Wars Celebration. We may. Are you guys going to get together and actually do an Airsoft show that in no way, shape, or form talks about Airsoft? Like, Oh, we're going to be no totally reason. talking about Star Wars yeah, Celebration. Yeah, just Star Wars. It'll, just, it'll be the live we'll, debrief from we, Celebration. Dude, we'll probably just go around <laughs> live with our phones and be like, oh my gosh, check this out. Look at this Stormtrooper! And then the audience is just like, yeah, it looks like every other Stormtrooper you've showed us for the last three hours. But this one has the Episode 2 belt on it. Oh my, see, he gets it. He gets it. He totally gets it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really funny. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up after that, we got Operation Stonebreaker 2020, March 20th to the 22nd, Appalachian Region, Third Coast Airsoft at GTI in Barnwell, South Carolina. I will not be attending this, but you will be blessed with the lovely Kaiju. He is going to be coming down from Jersey. Yep, so I'll actually I be in be Jersey him. for a meeting at, uh, the week prior. So he'll bring uh, some cheesesteaks and fried hot dogs with him, um, <laughs> and maybe a chemical smell. As he comes from Jersey. All the other Jersey stereotypes. He's going to stop by the Paramus Mall, get his hair done. It'll be great. Exactly. 
Uh, coming up after that, we got the Saratov Insurgency, March 20th to the 22nd. Uh, Milsim West again at Panthera. And uh, Joe from Ghost Dog actually uh, gives two thumbs up to Panthera Training Center. He recommends. So if you're in the area, I know you guys in West Virginia don't have a ton of options for national level games. So, you know, please, uh, you know, take advantage of that while it, well, it's in your area. And once again, remember, Milsim West is authentic head to toe. And you need to be prepared to live in the woods for the weekend. Um, coming up after that, we have the big... Nope, not the, just big airsoft game. I like that, <laughs> straight to the point. Uh, March 22nd, East Coast Airsoft is hosting this at Robin Hood Paintball in Hava de Grace, Maryland. That's actually my old stomping grounds. Uh, I'm from Rockville and my wife's from Bethesda. So I think Hava de Grace, if I'm not wrong, is out on the Eastern Peninsula. You know, they talk like this out there. I don't know. Robin Hood paintball logo covers, like, the entire state of Maryland. That's right everything on a national map. Like, Maryland, <laughs> is, Maryland is not a big state. Let's put it that way. Like, I, when I when I drive, when I go back home to New York to go see my dad when I was a kid, like, the drive was always like, okay, 45 minutes of Maryland, you're done. Then it's, like, two minutes of Pennsylvania because you got to, like, cross the Memorial mm-hmm. Bridge in Philly. And then it's about 20 minutes of Delaware, and then it's like an hour and a half of Jersey, and then you get to like the, you know what I mean? Like, yep. but the first three states were like, you'd cross a state border every 20 minutes, you yeah. know, like compared to here where... And I bet tolls suck on that route, because uh, everybody wants to get their piece. No, it was back in the day, so I took 95, and you could go around New York, oh. and that was the only big toll. Memorial Bridge didn't have a toll back then, the Chesapeake Bridge didn't have a yeah, toll back, back then. then. It was back then. It's back then when, back, back when pizza was a dollar and pop was a quarter. You know, back when, in the Wayback Machine. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, by the way, Brandon Johnson, I saw you in the chat. Just want to say congrats on graduating the Law Enforcement Academy. I oh. saw that on Facebook. Yes. I think you're officially a Popo now, 5 so i got to watch what I say in front of you. No. He's not officially Popo? He's got to finish his uh, like probation. Ride, ride along and probation pro- time? Yeah, he's got to finish his probation Okay, so you're, you're a junior Popo. One day you'll grow up and be a full-size <laughs> Popo. But congrats, brother. Uh <laughs> Yes, lucky I am aging myself. <laughs> All right, uh, coming up after that, ACS Airsoft seventh an- seven year anniversary, March twenty eighth. Um, ACS is holding this in West Paducah, Kentucky. Um, also, anybody who's been doing it for seven years, you know they've been doing it right. And lovely ham festival in the summertime, right around uh, you know June there in Paducah. Um, please check it out. Uh, coming up after that, we got Tracien and Copan, March twenty seventh to twenty ninth. This is a Centurion. Centurion. <laughs> Centurion. Okay. So An arena training facility in Blakely, Georgia. Um, this is their they're home They're almost field. sold out, man. Yeah, I was about to say, if you are interested in this event, you need to get on that right now. Because so I think there's like 40 tickets left or something like we're that. We're actually going to have staff from Centurion come on the show. Have I poked the bear enough finally? And... It just messed Hell with me. Test gets to ask anything I want, whatever he wants about Centurion. You know, I'm now whether or not the like staff real. will answer, <laughs> that's a different question. But we are setting it up that we're going to have Centurion staff on the show, and he gets to ask them whatever he wants about. I'm going to ask them nothing about actual airsoft. I'm going to ask them like what kind of car they drive, um, what's their favorite comic book. I'm going to totally not take advantage of the situation. You guys know me. <laughs> Yeah, um, please get on that. Uh, this is their original game. This is their big game of the year. It's really cool. I hear nothing but good things about it. Um, they got like 40 tickets left, so get on that. No, they have less than that. I thought it was like a 200-person game. They sold like a buck. I, no, or they, they have... Okay, so there's less they're, than... They're really getting down to the wire on Yeah, so don't mess around. around. If you're going to pull the trigger, pull the trigger and get in on that. It's a really unique experience. And they have the one-for-one... Military veteran. Yeah, that's right. So if you got a vet friend who hasn't been there, bring him along because yeah. he's free. But if you're a vet, you have to have paid. Yeah, that's all messed up. No. Well, they, they it's not pay. two free people. It's one person paid. And Thank paid. me for my service, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, that's hey, you got a military discount? Which, in, which here... There's five military bases, so many organizations... Well, you actually don't have to ask for it here. They just see the USAA card normally, and they go, like, did you serve? And I'm like, yeah, a million years ago. Like, just give me my 5%. USAA normally is the... Oh, I thought you were talking about AARP for you. Ooh. (laughs) You know, you're 10 years older than me, dude. You know that, right? Just just want to say that. One of of us drives a minivan, one of us doesn't. I don't drive a minivan. It's kind of like a minivan. It's it's minivan-esque. (laughs) 
the journey is the SUV version of the Dakota. Is it? Yes. Is it? it is. I thought the Durango was the SUV version of that. Durango is Jeep, I thought. No, Durango's a Dodge. Oh, is it? They yeah. don't do Durangos really anymore. Yeah, they do. do. They came back. Durango's oh, did back. They, they came back? In fact, right. I, I did, a, on. <laughs> did a motor swap on one about three months ago. Um, so if anybody's interested in an 8-4, uh, 5.4 Hemi that's sitting in my shop, uh, it's, it's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Just needs to get honed out. Um, where was I? I Castle. I, I, we, we totally got off. Operation um, Castle. Is it Castle? or? Yep. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Operation Castle, 27th, 29th of March. Lion Claws is holding this in Carson City, Nevada. This is a prison game. Take that however you want it. Moving on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. No, it's, uh, you got three factions. You got guards. You got prisoners. You got cartel. They said they got some interesting stuff planned. Um, it's yep. not going to be your traditional Milsim game. It's going to be more of a scenario. Interesting. John, John's got some good stuff. He's great at creating atmosphere. So please check that out. Ooh, ARP Airsofters. I think that was a category we missed. Um, coming up after that, we got Operation Southern Watch. This is the 4th to the 5th of April. Mere Tactical is hosting this at Hendry Correctional Institute in Immacoli, Florida. Uh, Silo Entertainment will be at this event. We actually were talking about him earlier. Yep. Um, he does pretty good videos. I like, I like, I like what he does a lot. And he uh, he's not too ridiculous with the sniper stuff. He still you know no. he still pistols. He he, he does a lot of a lot of different platforms. Yep. He normally runs with that kicking Mustang guy, if I remember right, from England. Yep. Um, Southern Front Two comes up after that, April third to the fifth. American Milsim joint at D fourteen. This is what we like to call a bridge event. Um, it's AMS local, which is they bring a lot of the leadership and staff from the national level AMS events down to local games. So it can kind of give you a taste if you want a, a full on experience and let you know. It's a good way like to get your toe. Outdoor scenario. Outdoor scenario. But lets you get your dip your toe in there. And this is a one day thing? Or no, it's a it's a full weekend. So is it a full if, weekend? Okay. If you've been playing at your out outdoor terrain or outdoor urban field um, with your buddies as a team and you haven't taken that trip to take that milsim event yet this is one of those types of events you want to check out before hitting any of the big ones this yeah. gives you just enough taste so actually that's a definition there that we kind of missed because the full-on milsim events not only is it a whole weekend thing but normally it's somewhere that you go to that doesn't normally have airsoft there that's kind of the signature of that like because most of what people consider milsim is not at a traditional airsoft facility correct it's at a army base or a training facility. It's a private property. Or it's you know, not a that, recreational yeah. field. It's an exception to the rule that yep. you get to play airsoft there. So you have to. That, that's your motivation to go play there. There you go. So, yeah. Just sorry. Fun thought. Um, what do we got next? Southern Operation Watch. Operation Fallen Kingdom. Fallen Kingdom. Uh, April third to the fifth, Northeast Region, a Lion Claws event at Fort Monmouth in Tinton Falls, New Jersey. This is kind of in your containment area. Um, like where you'd normally have like your offices and all that stuff, like a battalion area, if you guys know what that is. So kind of a mixed urban with maybe some outdoor terrain, but definitely buildings that you can shoot across and get crazy with. Heard nothing but good things. Um, up next is Cape Fear Rebellion 2, April 3rd to the 5th in the Appalachian region. This is a Black Ops Airsoft event in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Is Black Ops the field? Or? No, no, this is Black Ops Airsoft. Okay. So Not a, Black Ops Bristol. I just, I mean, I, I, I didn't know. There's, yep. It seems there's a lot of redundant names. There's, I believe there's actually three companies, three separate companies that call themselves Black, Black Ops. Black Ops into some variation. Black Ops of, some, of something. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so I don't know much about this. Uh, it's in Fayetteville, so what's do we know the field it's at, or did they not give us that information? Yeah, it's at Black Ops Paintball. Oh, I, did, I thought Black Ops was like the promotion company, not the actual name of the field. So, Black so, Ops Paintball, and they're hosting their own game. So, okay. the field is known as Black Ops Paintball, but they have an airsoft division. Okay. Yeah. All right, just making sure. I got confused there for a second. So, it is not an outside company. This is being held by the field itself. It's an outdoor field. Yep. Um, coming up after that, we got... Ooh, that's a good one. King... <laughs> khaki and did you just make this one up or is this a real is this a real event because i feel like you just put this in there to, to, to tip me up no this bit. is okay this is this is king a khaki in incursion two. Oh my god um, 
April 4th to 5th, Midwest region, Mir Tactical. Again, Mir has got to cut down on their schedule because they are just filling this event segment up like crazy. No, have you noticed how many events there were on April 4th and oh, 5th dude, weekend? Oh, exploded. Like, There's one, two, three, four, five events. We're just going to have to come on on that like Tuesday nights to do the event show. And I then know, like right? Thursday will be the normal show from now on. Um, all right. King Kang Key. That, um, that's good enough. Mere Tactical Dog Food Factory in that same name, Illinois. Um, this is pre-registration only. I guess Mere Tactical allows registration at the field as well. So if you're going to this one, you need to pre-register because I'm all guessing it's on private property Correct. and they need actual numbers. If you don't pre-buy a ticket, you don't get to play. So make sure you register for that Dog Food Factory. That sounds interesting. I wonder if there's still dog food there. Probably and Animals not. wandering around and Probably not. creatures. Like, no. No. Okay. <laughs> um, coming up after that we got City of Chaos April 19th um, Missouri Airsoft Simulations and Simulation Site in Lawson, Missouri that's Matt and Company down there at Mass which used to be the yeah. Mac which used to be something else it's just at that field it's just at the it's just a game day it's putting being put on by Twig Humphrey Twig Humphrey is hosting the game yes okay, cool. who's watching the show is right he right now? now yes he is say what's up Twig how's it going <laughs> <laughs> which is confusing i'm like i'm like wait i got i got invited to this event it's hosted by twig humphrey at mass so i'm like okay that's why i wanted to be clear okay no it's no worries i'm with you yeah glad you had my back on that one didn't want to look like a yeah friend. there was like there was like quite a few people going on to, the facebook page that's cool man yeah it's good to hear um and much support to all those mass guys down there um apparently they'll shoot you down if you fly near missouri adam welch says pronounced Kankaki. Kankaki. Okay. Kankaki. There you go. And please feel correct me because I'll screw it up next week too. <laughs> but I refuse to say Centramillion, right? <laughs> All right. Coming up after that, we got Battle at the Depot 2, April 24th to the 26th. This is an MSATO event at the Seneca Army Depot in Seneca, New York. Um, haven't been there personally. Heard some good things. So please check them out and support them. M. Sato is going to be uh, kind of one. They kind of be your main northeast guys. So please support yeah, them. Yeah, M. Sato and Otherworld Milson are the two two big ones up there. And if you don't support them, they will die, and then you will not have the opportunity to support them in the future. So please do that. Exactly. Um, coming up to that, we have the second annual VFA charity game, April twenty fourth to the twenty sixth. Veterans for Airsoft is hosting this event at the Sherwood Forest in Laporte, Indiana. Uh, VFA is doing good stuff. They are getting veterans out to airsoft games they are providing tickets they are providing uh gas money to get them there not only that do they have an adaptive chair if you have some trouble getting around you want to play they have full kit set up and guns so if you've never experienced a sport before you can just show up turnkey they can get you into the sport doing really wonderful things and i just want to let everybody know that i fully support their message since i am an example of airsoft bringing people back so thank you so much um Coming up after that, we got, ooh, I like this one. The Sheboygan Sanctuary Incursion 2. Where's this one at? Tell me this is like in Chicago. No. April 25th to the 26th, Mere Tactical Event at the Abandoned Asylum in Sheboygan Falls, Wisconsin. I love that. That's my new favorite place <laughs> in the country. Sheboygan Falls. I love that. <laughs> Uh, up there, that's uh, Wisconsin area. Check it out for you, all you guys in the Great White North. I meant that for snow, not for any other reason. I know where your head's at, audience. <laughs> um, and finally, Operations Hornet's Nest, June 6th and the 7th, Midwest at Mass, Missouri, Airsoft and Simulation Site. It's not actually at Mass. It's going to be at the old airfield in Rantoul, Illinois. Inside, outdoors, all kinds of cool stuff. Big abandoned hangar, so it looks like it's going to be a lot of Milsim fun. It's Milsim Urban. It's Milsim Urban. And you'll see these two lovely faces there because we'll be there hanging out, saying hi to everybody. So come see us. Yep, yep. And also, if, you, if you're really nice, apparently just talking to Matt, he gives away tickets because that's what you do on our show. <laughs> just handing them out. So apparently he doesn't care if he makes money or not. So oh. enjoy. So, oh my God, did I make it through? You did. Ooh, that was you, a lot. You did. Oh, we got 20 seconds till we hit the two hour mark and ASAP podcast starts. So, thank you for joining us on this week's episode. See you back next week. Thursday. Thursday, next Thursday. Next Thursday. At 6 o'clock Mountain, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Join the Falcon Alliance. Please check out our sponsors, Anola Gay and Elite Force. And check us out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, 
YouTube, SoundCloud. We love you all. See you next week. We're out. Bye. Bye. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. We will not go quietly into the night. It is your killer instinct which must be harnessed if you expect to survive in combat. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Remember this day, man. Or it will be yours for all time. What keeps you awake at night? Nothing. I keep other people awake at night.